Darrell Waltrip, the Hall of Famer with an all-star win. You'll soon see why he felt he should have more than just that one that first time. Jeff Gordon, part of our crew here now, Fox, uh, three all-star wins. Oh, and he brings it up all the time when we get to this time of year. <laughs> I'm just kidding. The past 32 All-Star races have produced many memorable moments. 22 different winners in 1987, Dale Earnhardt passing the grass. Two years later, Rusty Wallace, spot out Daryl. In 1995, Daryl ran into an old friend. I think an old friend ran into Daryl. All right, now, I don't know what he said, but everything he said is a damn lie. I'm telling you right now, I'd be thinking jump. I'd jump him jump right now. Jump to the start. Yeah, I didn't get much for jump. I got a little wee bit of a jump on him. Oh, D.W. Say. did jump him. They waved off the restart. I'm going to line him up and do it again. Base cars in. I remember coming down to this final restart. D.W. jumped the last restart. So I knew I had to, okay, well, I'll have to play, I'll have to play pretty conservative here. He did not jump him now. This looks dead even. I got a better car than he does. I know I can beat him. We both got a really good start. I get just a little bit of enjoying going into turn one. I actually overdrove turn one and got up into the left rear DW and we're side by side. I got him right here. And he gives me a little nudge. Lost a little momentum and that just stalled both of us out. Now we're drag racing down the back side by side. <laughs> then the track's kind of rough. The cars are bouncing and that allowed Dale to get a big run to the inside. Here comes the old gray mare on the inside. It's her heart all the way to the bottom. And he just dove in there so hard. DW's in a perfect position up high. And at the corner of my eye, way over down on the apron, I see this silver car. And I think silver car, silver car, silver car. Earnhardt. Oh, crap. Where will Earnhardt go? We get to the third turn, and I have to give Gordon some credit. I mean, I kind of saw it coming. I knew I needed to take the inside lane. I sealed in the corner. Dale comes in on the bottom, knows he can't make it. You see Earnhardt start to drift up. Lee Dale Earnhardt gets loose. Only way he's going to make it is bounce off of me. He's still got to go by a slams me. We both read. Those guys went flying into the wall. Destroys both cars. I knew right then that two of my fiercest competitors in this race were just taken out of it. And the rest is history. Jeff Gordon. It will go to victory lane. Is that anywhere near what Gordon said? D.W., I hate to say it, buddy. I think I had you covered. <laughs> <laughs> and now they're, they're cozy in the booth, oh right? Gosh. They're just best buddy. Uh, well, uh, Daryl, Jeff, I'm glad we settled that argument, right? Uh, oh, yeah, we settled it all right. What, look, he said, I want all three segments. I want all three segments. Let's get ready to kick your butt. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He listen, didn't know that, but listen, I was ready for I you. I held back in my interview because... I mean, the guy was hurt. He went into the wall. He had some bruised I'm ribs. Still, I wanted to I'm take still hurt. How but, did you know that you had to get down to the inside when those two were side by side? Well, <laughs> because because Dale really, he did not have the car that Daryl and I had, okay. even though I had the best car. Um, but, but And he knew that was his moment. That was his opportunity. And I knew he was going to use up every bit of his car in order to try to make that pass. It, it, it was a crazy, uh, uh, right at that point, it was crazy. But I tell you, looking back on it, I never thought we'd be standing up here talking about <laughs> no. it. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> and I still sense not a whole lot of agreement here. 22 years to the day since that happened. Wow. Incredible. That's a long time. It still feels like yesterday, right? Yeah. Yes, it does. That was a lot. Fun. But I tell you, I love the all-star race being a, a competitor in it back then. I love being up here in the booth watching these guys go to <laughs> I like that a lot better. <laughs> all right. Only winning matters in the open. Let's go trackside. And now for the most famous words in motorsports. Please welcome your Grand Marshal, Chief Executive Officer for Carolina Beverage, Andy Kerner. On behalf of Monster Energy and Carolina Beverage Group, drivers, start your engines! There's a lot of special rules for the All-Star Night, but for the Open, there is but one rule. Win or go home. The Monster Energy Open on FS1, next.
It's the Monster Energy Open. 24 drivers from NASCAR's Premier Series set to go. Four will advance. The Monster Energy All-Star Race and 20 will go home. Let's have a look at the starting lineup. The front row, Clint Boyer. The pole sitter won this race two of the last three years, and Ryan Blaney finished third last year in his first start. Yeah, the second row, Chase Elliott. Don't be surprised if he transfers through, but I bet he has that fan vote in his back pocket. You know, the guy that really impressed me in qualifying was Austin Dillon. He and Slugger Labby, I love what they were able to go back out and pick up. A.J. Allmendinger won the 2008 Open, and Daniel Suarez making his first start. And the guy that had the fastest car in practice, Eric Jones, he doesn't have any experience in this race. He's going to get some tonight. Well, same for Ty Dillon. He's also an all-star rookie. Danica Patrick has the fat, the uh, best tires furthest up in the field. She only made one run in qualifying. She's alongside Paul Menard, trying to transfer into his second all-star race. Yeah, it's starting at 11, Trevor Bain. He won stage one last year, made an incredible pass down the back straightaway. Watch for him to make some big moves. Yeah, I like uh, Regan Smith in that 43 car. I know he's a substitute driver, but this is a great opportunity for uh, Regan to really show his stuff. Matthew Benedetto campaigning on Reddit for the fan vote. Corey LaJoy in his first open start with Cole Witt. David Reagan, the 2011 winner, and Gray Galding, a rookie, as is Cody Ware in the 10th row, alongside independent Carl Long. And it'll be Jeffrey Earnhardt and Derek Cope in the 11th row. And neither Reed Sorensen nor Michael McDowell took time in pole qualifying. Let's dial up a pole sitter, Clint Boyer. Hey, Clint, this is Jeff up in the FS1 booth. You got me? You got me, man. Well, buddy, congrats on that pole, man. That was a heck of a lap. Sun setting, still pretty hot and slick in a few areas, and you got those kids all around you. What's it going to take to get in the all-star race? <laughs> Manage all of that. Uh, got a fast hot rod. Our Haas automation board was good. Appreciate Mike and all the guys, as always, on the 14 car. They just bring the heat, man. Uh, big night. It all, uh, it all starts here. You can't win that million bucks without winning this open. And Hopefully we get this first stage out of the way and get focused on that. But uh, uh, we've got three stabs at it. Just got to manage all this and stay up front here in clean air. All the things you got to do in a mile and a half. All right, that's the second time I've heard you tonight mention the million bucks. You know, it's your uh, team owner, uh, Tony Stewart's birthday. Maybe you share some of that million dollars if you win it later on tonight. Well, I just got to get busy. If I'm ever going to make as much money as you did, I better hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> well, get after it, my friend. All right, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Can't you just see that little devilish grin on his face behind the wheel yes. of that car? <laughs> oh, yes. I think it's still there right oh, now. Oh, <laughs> baby. All right, let's get down to pit road. Jamie Little. Well, A.J. Allmendinger is working with his brand new crew chief, Ernie Cope, for the first time. And about an hour ago, right after qualifying, A.J. told me that he feels like his car is a lot better than that fifth place starting position. He raced his way into the All-Star race back in 2008. And tonight, they plan on pitting for four tires after each stage. Watch the 47. Matt? Jamie Chase Elliott's already put a check mark next to the first goal for tonight. And that's a solid qualifying effort. He rolls off third. He told me clean air, track position, that will be key tonight. But the danger zone, he feels like, down turns three and four. The sun is just beating on the racetrack. Extremely free, edgy, just hanging on. Vince Welsh, he thinks it's going to be very treacherous at that end of the racetrack. 23-year-old Ryan Blaney is running in his second All-Star weekend of the sea of the uh, of his young career. He finished third in the Open last year. Didn't make the All-Star race. They've been one of the best cars several times this year. Second at Daytona, led the most laps at Texas, and top five last weekend at Kansas. When I asked one of the crew members, "What's the goal for today?" They said, "A million bucks." And I said, "Yeah, but you got to get through the Open first. And they said, "A million bucks." Ha <laughs> ha! That's confidence. Now, Mike, this is a very short race, and I agree with Jamie. I think you're going to get four tires at the end of every stage, but beware of that final break. They may pull some strategy right there. Let's take a look at our weather. Absolutely beautiful here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. 89 degrees, track temp 140. As it comes down, this track will gain some grip, not a bit of rain in the forecast. Race analysis, 50 laps, three stages. Stage one and two, 20 laps. The final stage, 10 green flag laps. Pit road speed, 45. And Mike, the grip level, maybe not right now, this racetrack will be at a four. 
Thanks, Larry. Turn three and turn two still in bright sunlight, as is the back stretch. From turn four to turn one, shaded by the grandstand. Fans are at the ready to see which drivers will transfer into the all star race. Each segment winner advances, and the fan vote winner also moves on. Four to advance. <laughs> That's a perfect Twenty to go home. <laughs> oh, oh, no. I got a headache. <laughs> That's the same thing happened to those drivers as they turned into that sun to turn three. <laughs> Ah, oh, fans are, this, that's what this is all about. Yes, right sir. Right there, those fans. Great night for the fans. And having this race in short stages and short races really plays to the first time fan. Hope we have a lot of them here tonight. Pace car is in. Stage one, 20 laps about to begin. Green flag and the Monster Energy Open is underway. Great start, nice and even, both cars side by side as they head off turn one. Look at this, already Almond Digger wanting to Ooh, kick it three wide. Four wide! To oh no my. surprise. No surprise whatsoever out of Almond Dinger. That's what this event is all about. He'll keep making those kinds of moves if he can. With that outside. Had, Suarez outside. had a big run. Yeah, it worked really good for Suarez. He had a great run on the outside. Moved right up there in the fourth spot. Not going to work well for Chase Elliott. He's going to have to do some work to get back to the front. Danica Man. Patrick got caught three wide in the middle between Trevor Bain and Menard. With that first turn with the shade on that first turn, he got a lot of grip getting down there. It makes you kind of brave. Doesn't last very long, though. Austin Dillon on the bottom, moving up for sixth place, side by side. And into turn three. Now at third place, Eric Jones to the bottom on Almendinger. Makes it work. Yeah, Almendinger is going to make some exciting moves. He's going to make it really hard on Eric Jones. But boy, Eric Jones just, he has the race car tonight. If he can get by Almendinger, boy, watch him go that. chase those look leaders that, down. Yeah. And just here comes Dillon. That gas and took off. Woo. Marshall Dillon up to fourth. Making a power move on the inside. Pretty good little car that three car is. But I tell you, the car I think is the fastest car on the racetrack is at 77. He had a problem at coming off turn four qualifying. Or he'd have been up on that front row, I'm pretty sure. We talked about Austin Dillon being loose into turn three. You saw it right there. He drove in deep, couldn't hold the bottom, slid up. The two, three now cars going to go by him. That's been their Achilles heel for two days over here, Jeff. He got it right qualifying, but boy, it's been trouble ever since. Suarez makes the pass for sixth on Dillon. Clint Boyer is in another area code. He has taken off, and he's yarded Ryan Blaney now by more than a second. So at this stage, if you're Ryan Blaney, can you catch Clint Boyer? Or do you say, you know what? We'll win segment two. He's not looking ahead right now. He's looking at rearview mirror because the 77 is closed up on the back of the 21 car, and that's where the race for second's going to be. Matt? Mike Chase Elliott has dropped back to fifth, just telling his team he's on the splitter, especially in the turn one. He's having to back up his entry quite a bit just to get through the corner. Yeah, a lot of these teams, they practice in the heat of the day. The pace was much slower than it is right now. And so they, they're trying to get the heights adjusted just right in that practice. I think they're running just a faster pace. The car's traveling more. Splitter and skirts, all those things are dragging the racetrack. Ninth place, Danica Patrick fighting back on the inside against Trevor Bain. And that's Regan Smith right behind in the 43. The last thing you want to see as a competitor, you can see it. They're stacking up behind Danica and Trevor. They're fighting and battling for this position, but they're stalling it out. The other competitors ahead of them are driving away, and these behind them, they want to get by. Here comes Ty Dillon on the outside, and Michael McDowell, who did not post a qualifying lap. He's got fresh tires on that white Chevrolet. I think Regan Smith's being really cautious behind Danica. He'd like to take them three wide down the back. I think he can make that work, but he's being real cautious as we go down the back straightaway here, start down the back. Cautious? This is the open. You can't yeah, be cautious. Look, that's a, what's going to happen. Somebody's going to take you three wide if you're cautious. He's a sub driver, though. He just got a little bit different mentality, I think. Man, what a battle this is. 
Trevor. Ninth place. Nobody's wanting to give it up. It's a little hornet's nest right there. Meanwhile, on the left of our screen here, you see uh, Mr. Boyer, who's just kind of out there cruising along, minding his own business. And he's maintained, he's minding the gap. 1.1, 1.2 seconds on Ryan Blaney. That has not changed. Wow, I'm McDowell is McDowell. flying. I am very impressed with the run he's having right now. Think about McDowell last week up in uh, Kansas. I mean, you know, he had a great run up there. McDowell did. Started last up there and finished 12th. Next time by, it'll be halfway in stage one. Boyer Blaney Jones, but remember, only winning matters. Only one driver will advance in stage one. What a run for Michael McDowell, who started 24th and runs in ninth place. I'm really anxious to see what happens in these next nine to ten laps because not many of these teams ran more than ten laps in practice. They really don't know how the balance and the grip level is going to change in these closing laps of this stage. Chase Elliott's telemetry in the upper right will give you an idea of speeds here with nine to go. Chase has got to be pretty frustrated right now because Amendinger is the one that really cost him some spots at the start by taking him three wide into turn one. Now he can't seem to get by him. I, I think that I think Chase is respecting Amendinger because he knows Amendinger is not somebody you want to play with. He he will come back and bite you if you give him a chance. Danica Patrick settles in 11th place. A bit frustrated. Oh. Wow, that Trevor was... Bain keeps it off the wall and hangs on. I mean, Danica just drove very aggressive, got to his lever, didn't touch him, just took the air off the rear of the car and got him sideways. They were battling those two cars with the six and the ten. They've been battling each other quite a bit here for the last several laps. Danica had about all she wanted of that, I guess. Let's take another look at that. Seven laps to go here. You see Trevor slides up the racetrack. She gets to his left rear. Oh, maybe. I don't know. I think I think the air started to send him sideways and maybe a little contact. Mm. Great save by Trevor Bain. It's been a hurricane if it had done that. That was a superhero save by sure Trevor was. Bain. It was. I know what he's got on his mind, too. Corey LaJoy is taking his car to the garage. Seven laps to go. Ryan Blaney now 1.8 back of Clint Boyer, but Eric Jones right there for second yeah, place. Yeah, but look what he just did. He just dove to the high side, going to try get a little clean air, try something different. That's what you, you need to do in this situation because this not only could possibly be for winning this stage, but can set you up for a better position once you come down pit road. Yeah, I think what these guys are doing now, the 21 and the 77, are really working on their cars thinking about the next stage. How about that second place car, Vince? Well, they've got some work to do on it, that's for sure. Blaney just told the crew, I'm about to spin out every time I touch the brakes. So they're going to have to help him at this first, uh, into this first stage, Jamie. And Austin Dillon back in six, slipped back two spots now in qualifying just about an hour ago. He was too loose and they made an air pressure adjustment, made the car much better. But now he's saying he's too tight and he's having to run a little bit higher than he wants to. Mike currently sixth. Boyer's fast lap, 28.92. Last time by, 30.27. Not much Huge. fall off, is there? Four to go in stage one. The stage winner advances to the all-star race and is done with the open. We'll get a fresh set of tires for the all-star race and be ready to go to try to win that million dollars. I just think this is it. So valuable information that he will be able to carry into the uh, into the all-star race. That's true. None of the 16 drivers who are already in the all-star race have been on the track at all today. Yeah, and this track's going to change a lot by the time the all-star race comes around as that sun continues to settle. Here's a nice run on Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott has an Almondinger. Going to complete that pass. He's only been working him for like 18 laps. <laughs> yeah, he needed that to happen about 15 laps ago. Second oh, place. Another. Carl oh. Long is the pick. 
two to go in stage one. That's why Pit Road has closed as Eric Jones works on Ryan Blaney for second place. Based on what we heard out of Ryan Blaney, if Eric Jones can just get close to his rear bumper, he'll probably get him pretty loose and be able to make that pass. They're running very close to lap times, 30-79 to a 30-71. Jones just a teeny bit quicker. Final lap of stage one. Cliff Boyer goes on to win this. What a battle we're going to expect in stage two between Blaney, Jones, and Elliott. He's out in front by 3.4 seconds. Here he comes off turn four. Clint Boyer, the pole sitter, is the stage one winner of the Monster Energy Open, looking to transfer for the third time in four years. It will be his eighth all-star start. Clint Boyer, thinking of the million. He is your stage one winner. Wake up, Clint. You're going to the all-star race. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's gone to his garage stall because when you win a stage, you are done with the Monster Energy Open. They'll check the lug nuts for tightness, and he'll get new tires for the all-star race. And as you mentioned, he's got a little bit of an advantage. He knows what the track conditions are. They can make a few minor adjustments to make that car even better. This is a no brainer here. Four tires for everybody. <laughs> and I'd say for most of these drivers, some pretty major adjustments to the chassis. And Mike Carl Argens and Carl Long's living large. Got a little sponsorship and he just got the free pass. <laughs> Vince. Well, Ryan Blaney ran second to Clint Boyer in this first segment, and Blaney adjusted the track bar from inside the car, but he said the entry at both ends still needs plenty of help. So that's the adjustments that they're going to make to try to help him for stage two. Matt? Chase Elliott very careful landing into turn three and through the center. A nice steal down of turn one, which he thinks will be great for the nighttime. 
significant adjustment on the 24. Jenny? Eric Jones trying to race his way into the All-Star race for the first time. No grip at all is his complaint. A four-tire stop. The 47 of A.J. Allmendinger. Fuel, they made a wedge adjustment to help that car. He wants the entry into the corner a little bit more snug. And it's Blaney who wins the race off hit road. Yeah. Bad news. Reed Sorensen did not stop. Ryan Blaney, the first off pit road. Rough stop for Eric Jones. A couple of young uh, Joey Logano fans enjoying Stock Car Racing's All-Star Night. Let's hear from our Stage 1 winner, Matt. Clint Boyer punched his ticket to the big money show quite early. Gives you a chance now to regroup, refocus on the task at hand. Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, the task at hand is a million bucks. Um, you know, we, we uh, did good there. Mike and all the guys in this 14 car brought a, a really fast race car. It was fast yesterday in practice, uh, obviously fast in qualifying. Um, enabled us to start up front, have that clean air benefit, and, and win that first stage. Get that behind you. Now let's focus on being a part of the big boys and uh, running for that million bucks. Thank you to Ford. Ford is fast. Yates, everybody with the horsepower. Um, it's just fun to be in these things. The Haas Automation, obviously, Gene, the opportunity you've given me is a, a dream of a lifetime. So um, Monster Energy, Brush Truck Centers, everybody, thank you. Mike? Reed Sorensen has made his pit stop. He'll restart 18th. Carl Long got the free pass. He'll be 19th. Eric Jones had trouble on the left side on his stop and dropped from second to ninth on the restart. Wow. Look at that. 14-3. Pace cars in. We're ready for stage two. Again, 20 laps, and the winner advances to the All-Star race. Blaney, Elliott, the front row. Here we go. I think this might get a little feisty, Mike. Got a bunch of young guns up there. I think Chase Elliott spun the tires a little bit there on that start. Let, allowed Blaney to get out there. He's coming back, though, on the outside. Yeah, Chase ended that uh, first 20 lapper there with a pretty good race car. I think he might be the fastest car in this group, to tell you the truth. 
Don't tell that to Daniel Suarez. He's right there. Yeah, yeah. but he just went by Daniel Suarez. I think he's going to chase over uh, Ryan Blaney down here because that 24 came on strong at the end of that first 20 lapper. We heard Ryan Blaney talk about being really loose in that first run. Looks like they've tuned that thing up pretty good. He's he's set sail right now. I, I think he's not quite as loose. We'll see if it gets looser as this run goes on. And look how important track position is. Eric Jones restarted ninth. He has gained two positions, but he's already 2.2 seconds behind leader Ryan Blaney. You know, Mike, you just don't have time to make mistakes like that, whether it's on the track or on pit road. No, he's uh, he, the only thing that would save him now is he get a caution maybe. Hey guys, look right there on the front of that 21 car down there at the grill opening. Jeremy Bullins decided, you know what? We can keep our guy out front. I'm going to put some tape on that nose, and that's the best thing for aerodynamics. Helps the front downforce, the car to turn, and helps the drag on the straightaway. And, and Larry, what's amazing about that? It's such a small piece of tape. You think, what could that possibly do? But when you look at the percentage of the grill opening that it closes up, it can do a lot. And that should not cause any overheating issue, not for a 20 lap run, especially with him being out there in that clean air. Yeah, yeah. But I think Larry, I think what's going to happen to the 21, he was he was struggling enough with the car being a little bit loose. I believe that 24 car is probably pretty stable right now, and I believe he's just going to be a little quicker. Lap times are about a tenth and a half quicker for the 24 than they are the 21, and he seems to be gaining on yeah, it. Yeah, that tape can help overall downforce, but it mainly helps front downforce. So they were going to have to make a significant uh, adjustment to that 21 car, Ryan Blaney, to compensate for that tape as well as the looseness he was feeling. You see that gap first to second, and it was dropping. Now it goes up just a little bit to a little less than half a second. 15 to go in stage two. Keep it right here and you won't miss a moment of the Monster Energy Open. Chase Elliott is right there within three tenths of a second. A little bobble there in turn three and four, and Blaney picked up a few tenths, and now it's pulling away. Blaney to his biggest lead of these last five laps. Yeah, he Vince. lost uh, two tenths. Yeah, the 21 of uh, Ryan Blaney, when they came in on that pit stop, just made an air pressure adjustment to give him a little bit more security on the entry to his corners. And the only thing they're telling him, just reminding him, hit your march, you're all good. We'll see. 
halfway in stage two. Chase Elliott caught him, got within a quarter of a second. Yeah, Fell back. Ryan's been doing a great job of doing just what Vince said, hitting his marks. He's not making any mistakes, and that's forcing Chase Elliott to get a little bit more aggressive. I believe Chase has a little bit faster race car, but that last time by, he drove into turn three a little bit too hard, got to the middle of the corner and washed up the racetrack, gave Blaney that big gap that he has right now. Yeah, I, I, Jeff, I just know how hard it is to slow down and go faster. Oh, Chase Elliott, real loose up the hill, uh, almost to the wall. Yeah, slow down and go faster. It's hard to do, but that's sometimes what you have to do particularly when a turn three and four is a condition it's in. Now that allows Blaney to open up a lead of one full second. On Chase Elliott, Suarez 1.7 back. And there it is in feet. With Elliott coming back. Yeah, I mean, as soon as Chase gets some clean air onto his race car as he fell back, he definitely has a very fast race car. Just what can he do with it? How can he get up there and keep that clean air, move around a little bit? Uh, and can the pace fall off a little bit and allow him to make that? Whoa, three car loose underneath the 47. Wow, what a save. We're all around out there. Just gather back in here. <laughs> that was a Ooh. save, Whoa. guys. Woo! They were three wide with Carl Long and didn't look like they were all going to fit. They did. But oh, then... Rub on the left rear. Yeah, the that's, that's not good. No. That'll, that'll be trouble. Yeah, he's going to have to come to pit road right away. I'll tell you what else is trouble, uh, Jeff. That 21 that the, went through traffic, it cost him a bunch of time, and it's allowed Chase Shelley to get right back on his back bumper. Yeah, he's down, uh, down to the apron, goes Almondinger. Greg Galding stopped briefly at the end of the pit road, then got going again. But here we are with six to go. And once again, Chase Elliott is within three tenths of a second of transferring into the All-Star race. Yeah, the traffic is what caused this to cause the 21 to lead the comfortable lead, lose the comfortable lead he had. Carl's down low. These guys. These guys are trying to squeeze by Carl, trying to stay out of the way. Yeah, Austin did a great job using that pick to get side by side with Almondinger. He's been talking about being loose. Gets down underneath. Ooh. Wow. Gets to the white line and the back just came around. Wow. Boy, just that little bit of contact in the left rear is all it took to put that fender on the left rear and rub. And he'll go to the garage area. Now all that has moved Eric Jones up to fourth behind Blaney, Elliott, and Suarez. Yeah, here's the, there, to go. Here's the battle, though. The 24 is there. Traffic has allowed him to catch up. Uh, Blaney didn't get through traffic quite as good as Chase did, and uh, that's made this a little bit tighter at the front. But I really believe Chase is going to have to search around because Blaney's just not making any mistakes. He's able to get right down on the white line and sort of use that to disturb the air behind Chase, uh, to, to behind him to Chase Elliott. I just don't think you're going to be able to close right up on him uh, and, and stay in his tracks. I think you're going to have to get there, either dive in the corner, get him loose, or use a different line. And you've only got two and a half laps to figure it out. Yeah, he's running out of time now, and it's just uh, if the one doesn't make a mistake here, it's going to be awfully hard to get by him. Two laps to go. And, and, it, and the temps are coming down. The track's cooling down. And shade in, th in turns four now. Shade in one in turn one down here. That's helping everybody. But I think that 21 is dialed in right now. It's Elliott had a runoff turn two that time. Yeah, and Chase, if you notice, he got really loose getting into turn one. He's driving extremely hard. There he goes trying to search around. He's got, he knows he's got to just try to do something to change it up. Well, that's been a pretty good lineup. I like that. So I saw several cars make good passes up there, but it didn't help him all that much. Last lap of stage two. Last year, Chase Elliott got passed for the lead on the last lap of stage one. And Chase keeps getting a great Bain. run he, there, he, doesn't he, DW? Oh, he can, gets a great run off turn two, really able to close up close, but I think it's going to be too little too late. He tried out this high line the last time through there. Did he learn enough? He got as close as home plate to the oh. pitcher's mound, but here they come, and the stage two winner, Ryan Blaney and the Wood Brothers. When Michael Waltrip transferred from the Open to the All-Star Race and won it for the Wood Brothers, Ryan Blaney was two years old. <laughs> <laughs>
Sorry, bro. <laughs> One of NASCAR's young guns comes through. Ryan Blaney is headed for the All-Star Race. Lug nut check for the stage two winner. That's a go. That's thumbs up, and you're out of here. You're done <laughs> go with <on. laughs> the Monster Energy Open in a good way because you're headed for the all-star race tonight. You know, if you follow the leader, you will follow the leader. Now, it's not my job to make the decision on what to do here. It's my job to tell you what might happen. Ten laps. You know what? We may see some right side changes only. Two keys, though. You need other people to do it with you, and you don't need a caution in these final 10 laps. Tires or track position, what would you rather have? I'm going to take both. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm Chase Elliott, I want four I got, tires I got and a good i got to have me some tires, and you've got to get Darryl. me in and out of here. <laughs> Matt. <laughs> Mike, the 19 of Daniel Suarez. Now, he was running lap times that were mirroring that of the leader near the end of that stage. The car fired off okay, but then it slowly just kept trickling to the tight side. At the end of the run, he was losing the back. Meanwhile, the 24, Chase Elliott, he was loosening and to the bottom. The adjustment they made on the previous stop helped initially, and then it went away. Jamie? Um, and Art said his car was a lot better that stop. They made an air pressure adjustment on the right side. So no fuel for the 27, and he eases his way out. Eric Jones wrecking loose. They want to help him for this 10-lap shootout. He comes out fourth or fifth. Landon Castle came out first by a wide margin with two tires. Three car took out. They're pretty hot, too. Yes. We go to the final stage of the Monster Energy Open. Ten green flag only laps. Keep it right here on FS1.
Landon Castle with a two tire change puts his MDS Ford out front for the final 10 green flag lap stage. Here's Vince with Ryan Blaney. And boy, isn't it interesting how the winner of stage one, Clint Boyer, parked right next to the winner of segment two, Ryan Blaney. It's weird how it works out that way in the garage sometimes, but you're into the all star race. How good was the car? I know you're getting some pressure from Chase. Yeah, we uh, we took off good. Uh, I thought like the first five laps is pretty good, and then we build build really free, and I can't really get into both corners, and I felt like that's where he was really really hurting us, which wasn't pretty. <laughs> uh, we had to hold him off at the end, and he was he was charging pretty hard, but luckily we were able to maintain and and um, getting off pit road first was a uh, you know, that, I think that won us the race, so they did a good job of, of keeping our spot in the pits. But um, at least we're in. Now we can sit down and work on it and never know. At night, might our car get, might get a little bit better, but um, that was definitely not pretty, but at least we're in. A lot of relief down here in the 21 garage, guys. Thanks, Fitz. Larry, what do you think of Landon Castle's two-tire gamble here? Well, I don't know that he has a good enough race car, and because he's the only one, he is a sitting duck who really hates he's the only one is Chase Elliott in that 24 car because he's going to hold Chase up. Yeah, that's Point. what I see here, Larry. I think that 19 car sitting in the catbird seat right now, get him a good start here, get out there. He could be the man. Great opportunity for Daniel Suarez starting on the outside to Just try and break away. Wondering if Chase may have learned something on that first start of the night when Almendinger went inside him and took him three wide. He might need to do that same thing here to Landon. That's what he's going to have to do if, he, if he's going to win this 10 lap. Watch him go three wide into turn one. 10 laps to go. Green flag laps only count. Green flag. Oh, oh no. Well, Chase Elliott got a boot from Eric Jones and around goes Castle. Well, that's the fear that you have when you have those two tires that you're going to spin the tires really bad. Held up that line and, and it's the open. You got to go. But Chase uh, got inside him. He got and turned some damage around. on that right front over there. I don't know how bad that is, but he has some damage. 24 car does. I mean, Landon is well, he's protecting the inside is what he's doing. He knows what's coming. Watch the second and third rows on the inside. There's a lot of action there before we even get down to turn one. Yeah. I think I think that Landon Castle knew what to expect. He knew Chase going to try to go three wide down in the corner down here. He tries to protect that inside. Well, you can see Chase hesitate because he wasn't quite to the start finish line. He realized he couldn't get inside uh, of Landon Castle before that start finish line. That's a rule that NASCAR has. So he hesitated a little bit. Then Eric Jones gave a little nudge to the 24. Landon comes down. They make contact. Around goes the 34. 24 has some damage on the right. I don't think it's significant, it's but there is some damage to the right front of the 24 car. Everyone gets by without incident. The lap does not count. Yeah, I mean, that's just a, a racing incident on a on a restart in a race like this. When you when you take two tires and everybody else has four, you might be setting in danger. Castle is on pit road. They're going to put tires on it and send him back out. So that will change the complexion of the restart. Still two positions to be decided. in the NASCAR all star race tonight right here on FS1. Clint Boyer, Ryan Blaney have already transferred in the winner of this 10 green flag lap stage and the fan vote winner yet to be decided. Daniel Suarez got to be feeling pretty good about his position. He has a good car. Well, let's see how they set the restart order. Now that Landon Castle will restart in the rear. Derek Cope also makes a pit stop. Yeah, my question right now on the on the restart here is this lineup because Chase Elliott was in third, Suarez was in second. They didn't actually complete a lap or anything like that. Do they go back to the lineup the way it was and Chase Elliott actually is going to go to the second position or are they going to consider him behind that three car because of what happened between the 24 and Landon Castle? 
Yeah, you see the, the 30, uh, 34 car here. You can see There's him wiggle the right there. You three. can see the wheel spin on the 34 of Castle. So 19 and three right, right down here are gonna be ahead of the 24. Then the caution comes out. So I think those are your first two cars. You know, it's, it's easy to second guess, but I think if you spin the wheels like that from the pole, you better move up a little bit because they're <laughs> going to be coming on both sides. Oh, but he knew what he knew what to expect. Right. And uh, he did the best he could to try to fend it off, but it didn't work out. Yeah, I mean, he did what he needed to do. Chase and, and behind him, Eric Jones, they were doing what they felt like they needed to do. Hey, it's a 10 lap shootout to get into the, yeah. the all-star race, man. Well, it's a bold move to take two tires. It's it's a gutsy one, but one that maybe could pay off. And so you you just that's about that's what this race is all about. Going for it. Yeah, there was a gamble. 34 car gambled on two tires. Chase gambled. Everybody's gambling. Ten laps. All right. So we listened in on team 24. I don't know what they expect. I mean, I'm inside of you. Yeah, you know, I just don't get it. Yeah, I mean, it's like why am I going to live for you when I'm inside of you? Clearly. I mean. Good question. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm sure the other side of it from Landon would, would be very similar from his side. <laughs> because too. I'm in front of you would be <laughs> one reason. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I, I think Landon had a pretty good idea that was coming, that it was going to be hard not to spin the wheels, and, and he was going to have to do some heavy blocking, and that Chase Elliott was going to try to take him three wide. So it'll be Daniel Suarez, Austin Dillon. Now what, now what do you think? Now what do you think? What do you think now? Chase Elliott, Danica Patrick, Eric Jones, Regan Smith, Paul Menard, David Reagan, Ty Dillon, and Cole with the top ten. What? Ten green flag laps to go. One driver to win it and advance. One for the fan vote. Now what I think about is the three of Austin Dillon and the 19 of Daniel Suarez being side by side. If they get to turn one, two side by side, watch for some action. I think we get three wide into turn one again. Uh, we'll know here in a second. Green flag. Pretty good start by everybody on this one. Suarez gets a little bit of an advantage. Three hanging tough on the outside. Suarez protected the bottom well. Boy, Chase didn't need that. He and the three car side by side off turn two down the back. That's going to slow the 24 down a little bit. And Jones looking on the outside. Winner go home. The round turn four to be nine laps to go. With that inside lane, just a little bit of an advantage for Chase Elliott as he slides up in front of the three of Austin Dillon. Here comes that 77. He's going to get by the uh, three of Dillon. 77, pretty darn fast. Watch Chase Elliott and Daniel Suarez run nine qualifying laps right here to finish this one off. <laughs> Chase has been in this position every two, stage. Both, both <laughs> stages, so. Uh, See if he can maybe get up and get after Suarez. Dylan Patrick fighting for fourth. Boy, Chase got a great run off a of turn two. This is a pr great precursor for that final 10 lap stage we're going to see in the All Star race later on tonight. 10 laps a long time around this racetrack. That's 15 miles. Tell you what, those horses, he's going to be hard to pass. Yeah. I don't know how, I don't know how uh, Chase is going to get around him, but he's going to be pretty hard to pass because he got a good race car. Suarez a little bit better into turn one, but Chase a whole lot better off turn two. Yeah, we saw Suarez get up off the bottom a little bit, three, four the last time, and that's where Chase really reeled him in. You see, when you hook that white line, boy, man, he it is really on it. is a big advantage. He is on it, man. I mean, he's giving it all he's got. I know, but I still think he's going to have to find a different line, clean air, or Suarez is going to have to make a mistake in order for Chase to get by him on the bottom. Well, Chase has got to go because that lap, Eric Jones in third was faster than either of the two leaders. Just remember, at the end of that last stage, what did we see on that 20-lap run? We saw Chase Elliott start searching the high line. Well, well you, there you go. Uh, he's, uh, he's got he's off up the, the hill, up the hill. That's not going to work too good for him. That really let Chase close. I think once he gets to that back bumper, I'm not saying he'd turn him or anything, but it sure changes the game. Well, with this smaller rear spoiler than they've ever run before, if you can get to him, I think it will loosen him up. 
Suarez is just so good getting into one. He really gains on the Chase getting into one. They're pretty equal in three and four. Well, we talked to him earlier after qualifying. That's exactly what he said. We see Eric Jones now going to the top side, going to try to make something happen. Whoa, he's there. He's looking. Oh, he's right there. He's he looked. He blocked. Whoa. Wow. Man, oh, they touched. Make contact. I don't think he's going to put up with much of that blocking in this race. It sure doesn't look like it. Whoa. Wow. Great job by Daniel Suarez to keep it straight. And Elliott to the lead. Yeah, but here comes it's that 77, over. too. While these two are up here mucking around, here he comes. Those two went for turn three, looking like Donnie and Kale. I think 77 might get them both. Wow. What a run off the corner. Oh, he's in the grass. No. Don't go in the grass. Boy, no. Yeah, he got the splitter. Oh, yeah. He, he something messed under up. He, the nose. He ruined his car this right there. Oh, oh spin he's by the 77. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang yeah, on. You can't run, you can't run through the grass. Now, Good was Chase great. Elliott ahead of Daniel Suarez when that caution came out? That's what we're going to have to determine. That's the damage from the left front when he went through the grass. Yeah, that's just... 25 years ago, the first running of the Winston under the lights here at Charlotte was one hot night. Tonight, we have no less. <laughs> when you say I've never seen anything like this before, well, then you've never seen any of these all-star races before. What an effort by Eric Jones, the two rookies battling last year's Rookie of the Year, Chase Elliott. And now we have caution with three to go. Yeah, this, this 77 is a car to beat it. He just got off the track. This is great battle for the lead. Chase Elliott got a big run off of turn four. He was able to draft up behind him and he gets Whoa, on his side. Look at Suarez. Did you see his hands wow. on Daniel Suarez be able to correct. Great reflexes. But you know what I like right there? The, the, whoa, here we go. Now this is where this is where the 77 just got off. You know, that's that's the problem with that grass. When you get in, we saw this with Dale Earnhardt Jr. several years ago. It ripped the nose right off of his car down in the grass. But you know what I liked about Chase Elliott? He gave Suarez a chance to get his car back under control. He didn't go in there and just keep driving, driving, driving. He gave him a chance to get back under control. That looked a lot like the pass in the grass. <laughs> <laughs> no. Dale Earnhardt mm -hmm. Sr., which was not a pass. No, it wasn't. The Elliots will remind you there was an Elliot involved in that one too. Chase's dad, Bill. Yeah, that was before splitters. I, th I think. A lot of things. Yeah, yes. I think uh, Eric Jones was just—he knew he had a car that could have gotten a lead right there if he hadn't gotten off the grass. Let's listen on uh, Chase Elliott. I sure wish we could just get through this deal without any drama one time. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. Tell me about it. The Elliots never did like drama. <laughs> Chase Elliott is 21 years old. Eric Jones, 20. Daniel Suarez in the 19. He's the old man of this group at 25. <laughs> Young guns indeed. Wow. Just got. Mm. Yep. He didn't have anywhere to go. He had a heck of a head of his team. Is he to run off the grass or run in the back of that 24 car? And, and before all this happened, I got to say the job that Daniel Suarez and Chase Elliott did run it side by side, bumping, banging, to just keep their cars going straight and not, you know, normally a young guy's going to just go in there as hard as he can, drift up into the other one, and one of them's going to wreck or both of them. That's what I like. I, I really, truly like what uh, Chase did there. He did not keep pounding on, on Suarez. He gave him a chance watch, to watch get back these, under control. Watch his hands as this unfolds. Touch. I mean, that looks like now, such watch, a, a little bit of movement from our camera, but inside that race car, that is a hold your breath, oh my gosh Well, moment. just watch his hands right here. Just watch his hands inside the car. And, and by the way, folks, that's what, 180, 90 miles per yeah. hour? Yeah. But right here is where I thought Chase really used his head. He could have gone on in there under Suarez and pushed him up the hill and made the pass, but he gave him a chance right there. But also like what Suarez did, he went in there very aggressively and held that outside line. Oh, me. I thought this would just be sort of a, you know, a 10 lapper. We'd be going moving on, but Larry, it's not even nighttime yet. <laughs> they're going to open the pits with three to go. Yeah, it's all for naught, Mike, because the rule for this race, they only had three sets of sticker tires or well, one yeah. of them was their qualifiers and that included those qualifiers. So nobody has any new tires laying in the pits.
Boy, Eric Jones had a full head of steam. <laughs> he just come off that. He was up high. Wow. And, and to give Eric credit here, he was right on the rear bumper of Chase Elliott. He could not see where that grass was. He just made a judgment call. Unfortunately, clipped that grass just enough. He was hoping that he was just past that part of the dog leg on this front straightaway where he could actually get inside of Chase Elliott. Yeah, he had to, he went up high, and those two cars in front were side by side. He had a heck of a head of a steam. He either had to go in the grass or hit the 24. Now we talked about uh, comparing this to the pass in the grass. Watch the three of Dale Earnhardt. Off the front bumper of Bill Elliott. That looked very similar to Daniel Suarez yeah. and Chase Elliott. Sure did. More so than maybe Eric Jones. But it ended all right for that guy. Not so well for the rest of them. That splitter, man, when that thing hits that grass, it digs in and it does a lot of damage. Ty Dillon and Michael McDowell make pit stops under this caution. We still have three laps to go in the Monster Energy Open. Three laps to go in the Monster Energy Open. Cleanup continues. Caution laps do not count. When Chase Elliott said over the radio, can we just have a <laughs> drama-free race for once? He's only been in two of these. <laughs> but remember what happened last year as his number 24 battled Kyle Larson for the win in the Open. Another great battle in the Open between two of our young stars, future stars. Plenty of paint was traded on the way to the checkered flag. That's a way, that is a way to race. I, I love it when you race like that. All right, Jamie. That sure was exciting. Definitely going for the win there with three laps to go. You went down low and destroyed the car. But what were you thinking at that moment on the bottom? Well, you know, we had to make something happen. It was kind of, a, you know, getting down to it. I guess three or four to go at that point. And, uh, you know, we were kind of behind the eight ball there after their the first segment and trying to work our way back and uh, you know had a big run on the top I knew the 19 wasn't going to leave us room and uh, you know I, I got behind the 24 I couldn't see where the asphalt and the grass began so just try to make a move get to the 24 and knew if we could clear them we could drive away we were uh, pretty fast you know most of the day so it's just unfortunate um, for our day to end that way but we'll come back next week and uh, bring another fast car and do it again here sure made it exciting we'll see Eric Jones next week in the Coca-Cola 600.
He sure did, and he, may, he certainly had. I think he had the fastest yeah, car of this is. final yeah. stage. Yeah, we went up high down there in three and four. I mean, he was coming in a hurry. Folks, this thing is not over. <laughs> and it's not drama free. No. No. no, I hate to tell Chase Elliott, but it, the drama may not be quite over. How about the leader, Matt? It's picking up even more now. Much like the previous stages, Mike Daniel swears is 19, goes the tight side, and that's where it is right now at both ends of the racetrack. Where he's most vulnerable, down in three and four, that's where it's much more on the tight side. And you saw the 24 of Elliott make some good runs at Daniel at that end of the raceway. Yeah, he's only going to have three laps to do it. I, I think the key here it, for Suarez, if you're Suarez, you've got to get a great restart and get clear of Chase Elliott and hope that he can't get by you in three laps. If you're Chase Elliott, you've got to get the, the restart of your life to be able to get side by side as you get down into turn one and hold him down to the inside. More drama this time at third place. Jamie. That's what it's all about right now. The third in uh, the three car is Austin Dillon. He's saying the fuel pressure light is blinking. So a little bit of a concern, but it won't stop him. He's going to go for the win here. Guys, I think what maybe happened is even though they've been to pit road twice, they've not been putting enough fuel in that car. The fuel window is about 54 to 60 laps. But just look at all the cautions we've run between the different stages, plus these. And those laps are not counting, but they're still laps you're running. Larry, you're, you're spot on. I'm thinking the same thing. They, didn't, they just didn't get enough fuel in that car. Dylan's teammate, Paul Menard, just came in and topped off. Yeah, they, I mean, they're keeping the fuel at a minimum. Yeah, for weight. They, they yeah, want to keep the, the most weight out of the car. They know this is a short race, and, and that weight can really slow the car down. And I think what's probably happening is he's in the banking. So while he's in the banking, there's a, a good chance some of that fuel is coming out of where the fuel pump and that, uh, that, that box that holds the fuel, and it's probably getting a little bit of air into it, and that's what's causing the fuel pressure to drop. You know, I saw a guy over here one time. It's been a long time ago. I saw a guy over here leading that thing, and with just a few laps ago, he ran out of fuel. Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, I know Matt <laughs> I know is guy. covering <laughs> Daniel Suarez and Chase Elliott, but we went back on our Hawkeye system. They did not fuel them between the stage two and three, but they fueled the 19 and the 24 a pretty good amount between stage one and two, so they should be good to go. Vince? Well, there's Danica Patrick sitting there in fourth. She's transferred to the All-Star race three times by fan vote. Now, she hasn't really had the car that she's going to go up there and pass those, uh, certainly Suarez or Chase Elliott or maybe even Austin Dillon. But if those three all get to racing, Patrick's had a good enough car to stay in that fourth spot. She could inherit something special here if they get to reckon. Yeah, one thing I'm worried about is this, the uh, oil dry that was put down on the bottom of the racetrack in turns one and two here. So we have to keep an eye on that as Suarez has chosen the inside line. What do you think, Reggie? Man, it's dirty down through there, Daniel. Uh, I don't know, man. I think it'll be a handful, but I'm going to leave it up to you again. You done a great job last time, but... I think right now Daniel Suarez is just thinking, I don't care about what's on the racetrack. I think about getting up through the gears, getting down to turn one, and I'm just going to drive as hard as I can. But that's the problem with that. I understand. I agree with 100%, but that's his where he's really bread and butter has been getting into turn one, and that's right where that stay dry and oil is. Obviously, he does not want to give up that outside lane. To We're going to find out. the inside lane. Right now, three laps to go. Win or go home, Suarez, Elliott. Dylan, Patrick, Smith, green flag. Wow. And Dan, great got a great start. start. Great start. And here comes the three right underneath Chase, and Chase is in trouble. Yeah, he's going to have to battle with the three car down here. But look at that good run he's getting on the outside. No well, three cars fighting back. Yeah, As they go is. down the back straightaway, it's going to make it difficult for Chase. Yeah, this is definitely not what Chase no, Elliott wanted exactly. to see. But look at him get a big run off the top. Well, we saw we saw uh, Eric Jones do that and got a heck of a heck of a run off turn. Two to go. Two to go. Hang on, Daniel. Want to get? Boy, Spore is. I swear, I can't believe how good he is getting down into turn one. That has just been his bread and butter. This is where they've been. I think the 24 is a little bit better on this end of the racetrack. Yeah, he did a nice job hooking that white line. One more time, buddy. White flag. Clear by five. 
Chase Elliott searching around a little bit. Oh, he got real loose. Oh, he did. He had to get out of the throttle. And here comes the three car. He's going to get by him. And here comes Dillon. Chase Austin Elliott. Dillon, the second. Eight tenths of a second back. Xfinity champ Daniel Suarez from Monterey, Mexico for Joe Gibbs Racing and Toyota. He will come to the checkered flag and yeah, win. Oh, Stage three. Yeah, that's fun, man. Good job. That was. Daniel Suarez races into the Monster Energy All-Star Race. And that leaves one position to go. All four Joe Gibbs Racing Toyotas are now in the All-Star Race. We're about to make official the results of the fan voting on NASCAR.com that concluded last night at midnight. Jeff Gordon gets to inform one lucky driver that he's in. Hey, Chase Elliott, this is Jeff up in the FS1 booth. You got me? Well, buddy, I, I know you didn't get in by uh, racing your way in, although you had a great race car and that was one crazy battle, but uh, I am happy to inform you, you did get the fan vote. You're in the all-star race, buddy. Uh, well, I certainly appreciate everybody's vote. That means a lot to me, obviously. Uh, as you are, I'm a racer. We'd love to love to race our way in and, um, and whatnot. But there's a wild one for sure. We'd love to get through without any drama in this one. That'd be, uh, be awesome. But like I say, I appreciate everybody's vote. It means a lot to me, and uh, we'll try to clean it up for tonight. Well, congrats. Maybe you'll go dra drama-free in that all-star race. <laughs> go get them. <laughs> Thanks. All right, drive it to your garage stall now. Daniel Suarez the winner, Austin Dillon second by 1.0 seconds, Chase Elliott third, Regan Smith finished fourth, Danica Patrick fifth, Ty Dillon, Trevor Bain, Matt Benedetto, Paul Menard, and David Reagan were the top ten. Daniel Suarez wins stage three and transfers into the All-Star race.
Welcome back to Charlotte Motor Speedway, where the stage for driver introductions is being rolled into position. Four drivers have transferred into the all-star race. Clint Boyer, Ryan Blaney, Daniel Suarez winning the three stages and Chase Elliott by the fan vote. They'll move into the all-star race. Matt? And Mike, some slight adjustments to the shoes. And Daniel Suarez continues to impress. First all-star weekend, you're in the big show. That was money on the restart, but how difficult deciding which lane to choose? It was very difficult. Uh, actually, after I, I took the bottom, I said, man, maybe maybe I won the top. But I was thinking, man, the bottom has been stronger all day long and was a little dirty out there in corner one and two. But I thought if I was going to have a, be able to have a good restart and be clear by corner one, I was going to be fine. And, and luckily, we had a decent restart right there, and it worked out well. Now hit the reset button. Now you're going for a million dollars. Now, now, now we go with the big guys. So, so it's going to be fun. Uh, I feel like we learned quite a bit in the first in the first 50 laps. Um, definitely, we we have to make some adjustments to be stronger. But, but the race track is going to change a lot. So we we'll see. Let's see what we got. Good luck, Thanks. Jamie. Austin Dillon missed making it into the all-star by one position. Where do you feel like you lacked a little bit over the front runner? Um, we needed to be a little better from the start finish line into turn one. Right there, we just couldn't get enough momentum to make something happen on the restart. Uh, from the very beginning of the first run, it was just that way. So I felt like our car was pretty decent overall, like handling. Just need a little bit more of everything. Um, but close there at the end, I just uh, I was hoping the 19 had some loose lugs or something. It didn't work out for us. But uh, proud of my Dow guys. We got to get in this thing next year. Uh, we're gonna work hard for the rest of the year to have a good season. All right, we'll see you next weekend, Austin. Vince with Danica Patrick who in that final restart started fourth on the outside I feel like that outside lane didn't want to get going track was dirty what were you guys missing there in that last bit yeah the outside definitely had a lot more wheel spin um, I couldn't even get flat until past the start finish line so um, so that was definitely a little, little bit of a challenge but you know I think that you know the the upside is I feel like we're more competitive this year than last year um, so that's good uh, unfortunately we don't get a little bit more practice tonight but Man, I've been I've been blessed with many years of, of fan vote, and um, you know uh, Chase is a great driver. He's going to put on a good show tonight, and uh, it was cool to see Suarez do do a good job and and make it through. Um, I wish I was in the race. I I do. I'm not going to lie, either way. But um, but um, hey, you know there's it was definitely more competitive than last year, so we'll take that and um, we'll move into next week and hope that uh, we can have our best race of the year next week. Thanks, Danica. Finding the silver lining, Mike. Absolutely. Thanks, Vince. It's been quite a night so far. Trevor Bain makes a superhero save after almost spinning off the bumper of Danica Patrick. Clint Boyer wins stage one from Ryan Blaney and Eric Jones. Stage two, Blaney got out front this fourth place battle between Almondinger and Dillon. Ended up with a big scrape on uh, the Dinger's car, and he ended up going to the garage. Ryan Blaney, winner of stage two over Chase Elliott and Daniel Suarez. Boy, stage three got off to a wild start. Landon Castle had taken just two tires. He spun those on the restart and got turned around. Battling for the final spot there. Daniel Suarez had a handful of wheel trying to stay off. Of Chase Elliott, Eric Jones had a big run, but got into the grass. And that tore up the front end of his Toyota. So Daniel Suarez becomes the second driver to win the Open for Joe Gibbs Racing as a rookie. The first to do it, Tony Stewart, 1999. Pretty no, good company. It really is. But I think any of the four cars that transferred could win the million bucks. Why not? I, I mean, strategy is going to be huge. We got the option tire. When do you use that? That's going to be part of this whole thing. So we'll see where it goes. Well, plus they just got very valuable track time and can make some adjustments. We heard uh, Chase Elliott talking about my splitter hitting the racetrack. Some of these other competitors in All Star don't uh, All Star race don't know maybe their splitter is going to hit. They don't have that opportunity to put those Packers or shims to get that splitter off unless they do it on pit road. But I got to say I'm impressed with Daniel Suarez. Wow. Sir. That's a great confidence booster for that young man. He's going to the big show. He gets to go race against some of the best in the business. Well, one of the topics we're going to debate pretty heavily up until the start of the race is the use of the softer or option tire. When it was first introduced, we thought, oh, you're going to save them all for that last 10-lap segment. 
Not so sure anymore. Mm -mm. Oh, don't be surprised if we see some start this first st uh, stage with those green tires. Third stage, that's when I'd put them on. Second stage, see? <laughs> yeah, it's hard Final to stage, what are you talking about? You only have one set of option tires. When will you use them? That's just one of the questions to be answered among the 20 drivers that will compete in the Monster Energy All-Star Race tonight on FS1. It's gonna go by in a flash, short segments, and somebody goes home with $1 million. It's all coming up right here on FS1. Preparations underway right now, including the four cars that just transferred into the All-Star Race being prepared. Clint Boyer, Stage 1 winner. Ryan Blaney, Stage 2 winner. Daniel Suarez captured the checkered flag. And Chase Elliott, the fan vote. They're moving on, and so are we. Spotlight. They say it's addictive. Just ask these guys. Dominating performance. Maybe one of the best ever. He is definitely the favorite today. Some are just starting to get a taste. Folks talked about the future of NASCAR. The future's now. But one thing's for sure. Everyone wants their turn. Green flag in the air. Let's go racing for a million bucks, boys! Does that feel real funky, y'all? Oh, there it goes. Hard in the wall. Tonight, cash is king in the Queen City, but glory lasts forever. <laughs> Who'll steal the spotlight? Find out right now on FS1. For the 33rd time, NASCAR's best gather for the All-Star Race. Tonight, we'll walk among the stars as they race while one driver races to be the best among the best. It's a good scene here at the home office of NASCAR's drivers and crews. 20 drivers, 10 former All-Star winners, among them Dale Earnhardt Jr., who won as a rookie, Jimmy Johnson, who has won four times most of any active driver, and Kevin Harvick, who is starting third tonight up front, hoping to grab that million-dollar prize 
and the moniker of being uh, the all-star. You did that once. Michael Waltrip, Chris Myers, continuing our coverage. It was back in 96. Well, uh, how about what we've seen so far? The aggressive driving, you were right on point, pretty much according to form, except for the Suarez racing his way in. So we always have the unknown, uncertain elements. Yeah, certainly. And just the aggression we've seen. It's been awesome. The restarts are crazy. We saw Eric Jones try to make that bold move to the bottom. It didn't pay off, but it's the all-star race, man. You're going to do everything you can to make your team a part of one of NASCAR's biggest nights of the year. Yeah, and some people just tuning in. We had the Preakness run earlier. They're ready for the All-Star race tonight. The drivers three who raced their way in and then the fan vote with Chase Elliott. But let's recap because this was as exciting racing as you're going to see here. Eight laps to go. Danica Patrick, what a save, Trevor Bain. Look at this. That's at 170 miles an hour, Chris, and he just battles that car and kept it heading in the right direction somehow. 14 cars, Stuart Haas and Clint Boyer. He transfers. He won the first stage to get in. Then seven laps to go. Austin Dillon and A.J. Almondaire. Here's another behind the wall tire rope. Beautiful save by Dylan. He hangs onto his car, puts Almendinger out of the race. But when you run side by side down in the corner at nearly 200 miles an hour, these cars are a handful to hold on to. Ryan Blaney, another Ford winning stage two. And here's where it really heated up for the final stage. Two tires for Landon Castle out in front, but he doesn't last long. No, Castle didn't take off well, and his landing was terrible. Not a good landing. I know where you were going with that. <laughs> Chase Elliott in the back spins. Four laps to go. Elliott try to give Daniel Suarez the bump and run. Eric Jones. Watch this. This is Jones saying, I see a hole. I can get there. But the hole meant, meant that he tore his car up, hitting the infield grass instead. Yeah, that was a splitter that didn't fit her. Suarez wins stage three, advances into the all-star race. And again, Chase Elliott winning the fan vote. You know, that final spot in the all-star race, uh, edging out. Uh, Danica Patrick in that fan vote. We heard from her a moments earlier. And she had a really competitive run. And Chris, I'm telling you, any one of these four racers are going to be competitive enough to run up front tonight. Clint Boyer had a really fast sport. It's been that way all weekend. Jimmy Johnson's been solid. There's a couple of guys that have made their way into the big show tonight. When you show up at Charlotte, you have to be in the all-star race. You're racers. You want it all. And these guys are going to get to be a part of it. Now, Suarez, the rookie, and only twice have rookies won the all-star race. And that Dale Earnhardt Jr. in his very first try, and Ryan Newman the other. How much does experience play? We saw Kevin Harvick. We've seen some of the young drivers because it is. It seems like it's over in a hurry. I just think these young drivers aren't intimidated by the veterans anymore. They come in here and they're like, I can run with these guys. I can beat them. But they're going to have their hands full with a couple of guys tonight. I think Kevin Harvick is going to be really fast. He had some great practice times. His car looks solid. And Jimmy Johnson, he's the only guy that's won this race more than once in the field. He's won it four times. He could be a big factor. Yeah. yeah. And by the way, the most drivers ever in an all-star race, 27 back in 2002. We had 10 drivers. That was the least back in 86, 20 tonight. And the format, three stages of 20 laps. The winners advance to the final stage. And that final stage, 10 green flag laps. And then only 10 drivers will be left racing for the one million dollar prize. Yeah, we're gonna eliminate 10 drivers. There's option tires that we have to think about. You also need to get the best average finish throughout the race so you can come to pit road and make your pit stop up front. Try to get that all important track position. We saw in the open how important it is to start near the front. You can certainly come from row two, maybe even row three, especially if you're on some special tires and get the job done. It's gonna be so interesting to watch these crew chiefs, these brilliant minds on pit road, try to figure out when is the best time to use their optional and tires. And what about the mind behind the wheel while well, they're getting ready. It's been a long all-star afternoon and evening. Jamie Little is standing by with Kevin Harvick. Jamie? Well, the party has certainly picked up behind us and Kevin Harvick ready to go. And you told us yesterday after qualifying, you're in the double four, I get double zero four chassis. So perhaps that's an omen, right? I hope so. You know, our, our, our Bush Sport has been good all weekend and it's really proud of everybody at Stuart Haas Racing for all the things that they've taken on this year with switching over to Ford and everybody from Ford uh, helping us get there. So. Everybody's doing a great job. We just have to put it all together, and the cars are running fast, and, and hopefully we can uh, get to victory lane tonight and win a fan a million dollars. That would be awesome, and you could take home a million, too, if you I'm take it now. about that. Yeah, but your fan, that'd be great. He's up on the pit box. Now, uh, your pit crew won pit crew award last night. There's all kinds of options tonight. They have to do their job, but you also have an option tire. When do we expect to see you guys? When can we? I think it all depends on, on how it's going. Um, you know, you, you have to worry about trying to win a stage. You have to worry about trying to have, um, you know, a spot in those last 10 races. So, you know, I think if there's something that goes wrong, you got to put them on earlier in order to, to try to get a win or, or try to get uh, um, some track position and, and gain some spots to get your average finish up. 
All right, Kevin Harvick won the All-Star race back in 2007. Matt? Jamie, nobody says big money more in this event than Jimmy Johnson. And it's only appropriate that when you look at our history in the United States, the guy who came up with our monetary system, Alexander Hamilton, you said, you know what, that's going to be a great theme for your helmet tonight. How'd you come up with that idea? Yeah, we did a helmet a few years back where we had George Washington on it, and it turned out pretty well for us there. A lot of good luck that night. A lot of good luck. Got a million of those $1 bills. And then, uh, you know, Beam paints my helmets is always looking to do cool new things. And um, with the popularity around Hamilton now and his notoriety, it was like, hey, let's, let's go in a little different direction and came up with a cool helmet. A great quote on the back, and will that come to fruition? You almost have to be perfect tonight to take home the million with all the different uh, things added to the format and the softer tires. Yeah, without a doubt. And then, you know, we practiced during the day, and now we're going to go race at night. So there are many challenges tonight. It's hard to pick just one and hard to know which one will, will be the one that is, uh, you know, the race-winning uh, area to focus in. So uh, we're going to try to cover our bases everywhere we can. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, it'll be a very competitive and action-packed race for the fans. Good luck on the money. Yeah, buddy. Thank you. Vince? With Matt Kenza, the former All-Star winner, what's, what's the coolest thing for you as a driver to enjoy during the All-Star? <laughs> other than Kyle Busch. <laughs> it's only very enjoyable when you win. Um, other than that, it's really not not as much fun. So I've been fortunate enough to win one. I've, I've lost a couple. One time I spent on pit road when I think we were going to come out lead. Another time Tony passed me right toward the end. So it's a great event. It's really fun to be part of it. Uh, but like I said, it only it only matters if you're the winner tonight. How do you see the, the uh, alternate tire, the option tire, playing into the strategy tonight? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, I... I Nobody knows till it's over, but I feel like the only strategy is going to be is what segment you're going to use them in. You know, so if you're not don't have a good enough average finish for whatever reason, you might have to use them in the second or third segment to try to get that average finish, uh, because they only gave us four sets of tires and there's four segments. So um, if everybody pits it, every segment puts on hard tires, everybody's going to only have soft ones at the end. So I think it's just the strategy is going to be is if you need to use them before that last segment. Keep an eye on it. Thanks, Matt. Let's go to Chris. Thank you, Vince and Matt, and the odds have posted, odds makers, even for the All-Star race. Martin Truex Jr., who won last week, right, is the favorite today, uh, slightly ahead of Kyle Busch and pole sitter Kyle Larson. Yeah, and remember what Martin Truex did here a year ago in the, uh, in the 600. He just dominated this event, and odds are great, but what about Daniel Suarez? The odds of him being in the All-Star race had to be totally long. He was able to overcome those odds and put himself in a position, but I like the Kyles. Both those cars will be really competitive tonight. What about Brad Kozlowski, who's never won the All-Star race? seems like he's won everything else. Yeah, he was second last year, and he's aggressive. He likes to get out there and poke and shove, and I think he'll do that tonight. He's going to be fun to watch. Already a good showing for four. Joey Logano, of course, the defending champion of this All-Star race. A week from tomorrow is the Coke 600, also the Indy 500, and this to report from Indy qualifying, Sebastian Bourdais. We certainly hope he's okay. This happened earlier today, a crash in turn two, and the reports are his lower extremities hurting, was taken away to a hospital for further x-rays by way of ambulance. His car got loose and then turned right into the wall, hoping that Sebastian Bourdais is okay. Coming up here on race day, counting it down to the Monster Energy All-Star Race. 20 drivers, a million dollars on the line. It's Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s last go-round. He's going to check in with another 88 and Michael on the gridwalk as we're live from Charlotte Motor Speedway and glad you're watching FS1.
Coca-Cola at ProCast. Invite you to share a moment with Joey Logano at head of the Fox and ask our Facebook page to get exclusive behind the scenes access with Joey and your favorite drivers. Michael Waltrip, Chris Myers with you. A favorite moment for the All-Star Race, the 33rd All-Star Race last year, one of the most competitive. We had a record 13 different lead changes. Can we expect that tonight? I think so, Chris. You know, we got these speeds that are so high entering the corners because of little spoilers on the back. So the temperatures are going to go down. The cars are going to start sticking better in the corners, but you've got tremendous straightaway speed. And we've also seen these drivers certainly aren't afraid to use their bumpers. They've been all over each other just in the plea rim tonight. We'll see what happens in the main event. And a special night for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Remember, as a rookie, he won his first All-Star race, and this is his last, uh, announcing his retirement at the end of this season. And he'll be starting sixth this evening. Matt Yoakum caught up with Dale and his special guest a little earlier today. Chris, I'm here with a pair of 88's NFL star Greg Olson of the Carolina Panthers, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Later this year, though, a fan's going to win a weekend with the 88's. A one-of-a-kind NFL and NASCAR experience over a four-day span. And the coolest part, it benefits the Levine Children's Hospital and Greg, your charity, The Hardest Yard. Is this going to be like winning the Powerball for a sports fan? I think so. I think uh, the experience that we give a lucky fan and, and a guest um, is kind of unheard of in, in the sports world. And, you know, to work with Dale now for the third year in a row in the Dale Jr. Foundation, something that he and I share a lot about is supporting our local community and especially the kids at the, the Children's Hospital here in Charlotte and you know just the idea of working together on this and, and giving fans such an incredible four-day experience a behind-the-scenes experience at an NFL game and then of course with Dale and his team down in Talladega it's uh, it's really a special relationship now Junior you give so much of your time just like Greg does away from the competition away from the field or the racetrack but tonight it's all about the fans your final all-star race and then you throw in the, the wrench, so to speak, with the softer tires. What can you expect to see tonight in your final All-Star? Well, no matter what tires we put on the car, I hope the car is just going to be driving great. We had a great practice yesterday and a good qualifying effort. We're going to have a good start position. That really helps because it's a short race. We're confident and going to just roll as hard as we can every lap and see how it works out for us. Now, Chris, don't forget, it's a weekend with the 88. The drawing is September 20th. Dale Earnhardt Jr. attended the 2017 Racing Collectibles Club of America Member Appreciation Party at Lionel uh, Racing earlier today. And that event raised some $60,000 for Nationwide Children's Hospital. Nearly 500 die-cast collectors were on uh, hand and enjoyed signing, getting an autograph Dale Earnhardt Jr. We're live here on race day at Charlotte Motor Speedway. A Monster Energy All-Star Race taking place shortly as you see driver introductions. Michael, that's always a cool scene. The fans, a lot of family and friends from the Charlotte, Huntersville area, Mooresville that can be here as the entire crews are introduced. That's so special, Chris. That's what it's all about getting into this race. Chris Buescher was able to win a race and get his whole team out on the uh, out on the stage to say hello to the fans and listen to those engines turning up in the background. That's the smoke show going on courtesy of Monster Energy and these guys are having a lot of fun. The pre-race festivities continuing, the Monster Energy Smoke Show. Usually they hold this in the fan zone. But for the Monster Energy All-Star Race, though, they move the smoke show out onto the track. They want to lay a little, lay a little rubber down for some of the drivers. And uh, race fans, whenever you go to a race, wherever, uh, each week, you can find these guys and uh, enjoy what they do. Check out the Monster Energy Smoke Show in the fan zone, usually as uh, they are putting on a show. And you know, that's what I love about Monster Energy. They brought so much fun to NASCAR this year. Whether you turn and look out behind the grandstands in the fan zone or in the infield, you always see Monster Energy involvement. A lot of, uh, a lot of crazy athletes doing some fun things on the track. And the Monster Energy girls. Of course. Dramatic pause. Uh, driver introductions continuing here with uh, Denny Hamlin. If we go back uh, a couple of years ago, right, he had quite a wild all-star race. Yeah, and he's not very happy with his car as of yesterday, but maybe it's better today. It was two years ago, the only Toyota to win in the All-Star race. There's his teammate, Matt Kenseth, bringing his guys out. Yeah, that's a story, Michael, the Joe Gibbs Racing. I know this is a break in an All-Star event to have fun, uh, but the fact that uh, Joe Gibbs Racing has yet to win a race in the first 11 of the season points races. Certainly a big story, but the rookie, Daniel Suarez, getting, the, 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 getting that last stage win in the open, that has to give these guys, Matt Kenseth, Denny Hamlin, a lot of confidence about the Toyotas that they'll be racing tonight. Well, when you go to test the tires later, are you going to be in one of these or one of these? Uh, no, I'm in a, in a 
in a NASCAR experience car running about 160 miles an hour, filling out those optional tires, or the monster tires, as I like to call them. The monster tires. We'll ride that. There's Brad Kozlowski and the Miller Lite Penske team. We mentioned earlier that last year in the All-Star Race, so he was second, so with Joey Logano winning, was the first time ever that teammates in Ford, Roger Penske Ford, finished 1-2 in this All-Star Race. And here comes Dale Earnhardt let's, let's Jr. See. He's going to pop out that door, and the fans are going to go crazy. Let's give a warm welcome and a farewell welcome, 18-time All-Star Racer, 2000 winner from Kannapolis, North Carolina, Dale Earnhardt Jr. A showstopper from Kannapolis, by the way, just for the record. We, we want people that uh, are watching uh, in all parts of the great state of North Carolina as we are at Charlotte Motor Speedway, and those fans will remember that for a long time. A 14 consecutive years voted NASCAR's most popular driver, Dale Earnhardt Jr., in his last All-Star race. He won his first All-Star race, too, Chris, as a rookie, so if he could win his last one and bookend it, that would be a special night, not only for he and his team, but for all these fans that are here cheering for Dale Jr. The 88 car, part of Hendrick Motorsports. Kurt Busch and the Monster Energy, Stuart Haas, there's his crew. I'm sure Kurt is back there signing autographs, <laughs> saying hello. Good crowd. Enjoy. It was a hot, muggy day, so they, they toughed it out. Saw some really good racing and qualifying, and they open. There's Kurt. Who's next? Bam. There you go. The guy that's won this race four times, like I talked earlier. He Chris, he's got a great starting position. He's up front. I look for this team to be really tough tonight. You know, a year ago, coming into the All-Star race, it was all about the Toyotas. Joe Gibbs Racing was dominant up until this point of 2016. But in the All-Star race, it was the Fords. Can the same thing happen this year? Because the Fords have been so strong up to this point. Can a Chevy or Toyota take tonight? Yeah, and these fans, I mean, you're shaking hands with a seven-time champion and unprecedented if he gets to eight and many people think that will happen he's already won twice this year of course brad kozlowski also a two-time winner to start the season as we break for this all-star event there's kevin harvick we're still looking for his first win of this year and if you had to make me pick one guy to win this race tonight i'm going to pick kevin harvick i think his times in practice yesterday were solid rodney childers knows how to take advantage of of any situation the new rules with the uh, option tires they'll have to be on top of that i look for harvick to be a real player tonight. Yeah, he's been in the top 10. I mean, he's been around it. Uh, the 2014 champ and the All-Star winner in 2007. Look how much fun these crews and even Harvick's having. The motorcycle spinning those tires. The tires uh, will be the story tonight, whether it's the one spinning on the motorcycles or these option tires these drivers will be using later tonight. Kyle Busch, who also has had opportunities, has yet to win this season. And one of those uh, drivers starting up front and right, he's in the second, I should say, he's starting on the front row with Kyle Larson. I like how the m and guys are red and green and brown, all different colors. <laughs> You're just getting hungry. Uh, we're going to head out. You heard Michael talk about tires. It's been talked about all afternoon and evening. The tire test from Michael himself out on the track. You're going to go green. You're going to go soft. What are you doing?
You're watching Race Day Live on FS1 from Charlotte Motor Speedway and the Monster Energy All-Star Race and all that comes with it. Fans enjoying what's taking place. Teams have to decide when and whether to use their prime tires. And just for this race, their set of option tires. They have the green markings. Well, to get a better read on uh, which tire they'll choose, we have Michael Waltrip go out and demonstrate, and he's got a good grip on the subject and behind the wheel. I love the Monster Energy All-Star Race, and this year, there's tire options. What? There's gonna be soft tires these drivers can use. How will that feel? What's it gonna be like when they go down to the corner at over 200 miles an hour? I got me a driver's suit, I got me a car, and some optional tires, I'm gonna find out. Okay, ready to go. few more laps just for the fun of it. All right, thanks. See y'all. You, so you know, Chris, coming out here, I think everyone thought that they would, everyone would save those option softer tires for the final 10 lap segment. Problem is, you have to get to that segment, only 10 drivers. So the strategy has already started, and we've not even seen the green flag. Three of those four drivers that transferred from the open, Ryan Blaney in the 21, Daniel Suarez in the 19, and Chase Elliott in the 24, those teams have elected to start this first stage own those softer option tires. They're gonna to try to make as much ground as they can because remember, if you can't win a stage, Chris, it's all about the average finish. All right, thank you very much, Larry. Appreciate that. So tires will play into this as they always do. Crew Chiefs on the spot, but ultimately the All-Star event is about the stars. And those are the guys behind the wheel, the drivers. In fact, Joey Logano, who won last year's All-Star race, trying to become only the third driver in NASCAR All-Star history to win back-to-back All-Star races. Davey Allison and Jimmy Johnson <laughs> are the only other two to do it. All right, the reason I'm sitting here alone, you saw Michael jump in the fire suit. Now he's back in his regular TV suit and he's ready for the grid walk and Michael you're with a special member of our Fox NASCAR family so let's head out to Michael and the grid walk live here on FS1. Yeah Bryson Burns uh, Chris is around here somewhere we've gotten separated I'll find him in a minute. Hey Owen where did your daddy go? Yeah, I, I lost Kyle Larson. Here's Kevin Harvick. Hey, guys, I just told him on the pre-race show that you were my favorites to win tonight. I thought the car was fast. This man's really smart around the strategy. Uh, I appreciate that, Mike. I appreciate you calling me your favorite. Were you talking about me or my car? I like your car. It's got bucks all over it, bush bucks. Yeah, I like it, too. And it would be way cooler to win for the, uh, Steve, uh, who could win, the, the fan that could win a million dollars tonight, than it would be for us, because I think it would be cool to see a fan walk out of here a millionaire. That's awesome. Have a good night. Thank you, Mike. Let's see who else we can find. Kyle Larson went to the bathroom. Hi, Rodney. Hey, man. When are you going to put on your tires? Go ahead and tell us now. Nobody else is listening. It's top secret. So you're not going to? No. Okay. Well, the tires will be interesting. Here's Kurt Busch. Monster Energy. It's Monster All-Star Night. It's a beautiful evening. You should win. You're dressed properly. Thank you. I wore my best <laughs> outfit. No, I love this race, the atmosphere, and the fun. I mean, going after it hard, and then the final 10 laps, that's what we've got to do is put ourselves in position for that, and then put on the Goodyear green fast race tires that stick really good. Monster tires. That's right. Monster. Hey, uh, by the way, I feel like that this car can get the job done. This is another guy that's going to have a lot to say with what happens tonight. Hey, guys, are y'all discussing when you're going to put on your green tires? Yeah, actually, right now. <laughs> what, what, tell me. 
Whatever uh, he tells me. Yeah. <laughs> it's an aggressive night, Brad. You've made some awesome moves in this race. Haven't got to victory lane second a year ago. Can you get it done tonight? I think absolutely. We just got to put it all together. You know, there's going to be a lot of things that aren't in your control, and you got to control the things you can control. That's going to be the key tonight. My buddy Bryson Burns is walking around with a million dollars in a suitcase. Have you seen him? I have not, but I'm going to have to go find him. Where's Bryson at? Have to see if we can. Oh, Denny Hamlin hasn't been the car he's looked for this year. Let's go see. Hi there. Hi. How was your event this morning? It was great. Thanks for asking. Move, sir. You're you're just in the way. You're kind of a pain too, aggravating. Hey, Denny Hamlin, Michael Waltrip, Fox Sports. Have you seen Bryson Burns? He has a suitcase with a million dollars in it. No, but if I find him, I'll uh, introduce myself to him. <laughs> How do you feel about the number 11 oh, car? Bryson, yes, where you been, my brother? Where's, you showed me to meet me at the opposite side. Where's the money? I want to know where the money is. <laughs> oh, looky what we got in here. Can I touch it? No. Can I look at uh, it? No. Look that way. No. <laughs> oh, he's, he's tough with the money. He's not very friendly. <laughs> How are you feeling about there. your chance to win that million dollars tonight, Hamlin? Uh, I'd say it's about one in 20 shot. Right on. I get that. Yeah. Is this your assistant? No. <laughs> I don't know that guy. All right, I got to go. Bryson, come on. He's not very fun. Let's see who else we can find. Here we go. Casey Kane. Hey, hey, Casey. Casey, y'all, watch, watch what I got. Look at this. Small loan, small loan of a million dollars right here. Yeah, I think I know. It's Pop it. Pop it. Hey, when it's are y'all going to get your optional tires? Uh, sometime. Look at that money. Wow. Easy. Look at the money. Easy. Leave everybody's eyes light up. What do you mean about that, Case? Oh, yeah, he wants to. scared him. Oh. He doesn't want a million dollars? Here, this will take care of him. Just, <laughs> just, just take that. Have fun, Casey. Hope you have a good night. Richard Childress is over here. That's a lot of fun. Hey, Pop Pop, have a good night. Man, it's beautiful down here. Bryson, thank you for helping me with the million dollars. We're going to have fun in the Monster Energy All-Star Race. The energy is out the roof. Bryson and I are going to go tease people with this money. Yeah. Come back to the Monster Energy All-Star Race from the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Okay. See you all later. <laughs>
five on FS1. They put a lot on the line every time they get behind the wheel. These are the best of the best. NASCAR's 33rd All-Star Race. Is it going to happen again? At this time, we ask that you please rise and remove your hats as the 14th Weather Squadron, United States Air Force, from Asheville, North Carolina, presents our nation's colors. Please remain standing as Coach Joe Gibbs offers our invocation. Father, we just want to thank you. You made each and every one of us. You made us special and different and you want to have a personal relationship with each one of us. We thank you for that. We thank you for all of those serving around the world protecting us. Put a hedge of protection around each one of them. And Father, in particular, we pray for those that have been hurt defending our country. We pray for them, for their medical treatment, and their families. Father, we know that most people around the world never get to enjoy a night like tonight. We thank you for that. And Father, most of all, we thank you for the fact that you love us so much. You were willing to send your one and only son to this earth. He lived a perfect life. You allowed him to go to that cross so we could have forgiveness of sin and we could have a personal relationship with you. Thank you, Father. Here to perform our national anthem is a special young lady you may recognize from her performances on The Ellen DeGeneres Show and America's Got Talent. Please welcome 17-year-old recording artist and ovarian cancer survivor, Callie Bevier. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the So gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night That our flag was still there Oh, say does that star Spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the brave. Let's hear it one more time. For the 25th anniversary of that legendary one hot night. What will happen tonight?
Chevrolet, the official vehicle of NASCAR, is the most awarded car company three years in a row. Learn more at Chevrolet.com. We expect tonight the largest single-day nighttime sporting event crowd in the world ever. Green flag, the front row pulls away. And Earnhardt slips around the outside lane. Dale Earnhardt goes in front. One lap to go. Kyle pulls down to the bottom. Earnhardt runs him all the way to the bottom of the back straightaway. Now they touch. Earnhardt's car spins at turn number three. Here comes Davey Allison to the bottom. It'll be the finish at Uh-oh. He won the race, but he sure paid the price for it. That's 25 years ago. There's a guy who hasn't hit age 25 yet, Ryan Blaney, but he raced his way in in the open to be a part of the 20 car field for the all-star race coming up. And I like these guys that have done that, Chris. Look at Clint Boyer. He was solid in that open. He advanced right off the bat. Look for Blaney, Boyer, Chase Elliott, all those guys to race up through there. Kyle Larson, nice of him to stop by with us a little bit earlier. He's your points leader for the year, and he's the pole sitter for today. He, he has a win this year, but he has four second place finishes, and he's a guy, when you talk about drivers that go for it, uh, that's his middle name. <laughs> that's exactly right. He's a dirt racer. Sir, they run 20 lap features. This is exactly right in his wheelhouse. You know, we talked with Greg Olson, tight end, also Kyle Rudolph, tight end for the Vikings, who are NASCAR fans who are here in attendance, and they talked about how the pit crews have to be athletic and get loose, and they're ready for their teams in this quick race. And Brad Kozlowski and his Ford, runner up last year, ready to go for his first All Star win. Yeah, the pit crews could play a huge role in who wins this race. We're going to see strategy, we're going to see drivers going for it, making moves that they wouldn't dare make on a regular points night. They want the trophy tonight. A total of 70 laps, and the winner gets a million dollars. Chase Elliott had a battle there in that last stage to try to race his way in, but got the fan vote to get in. Still looking for his first cup victory. Casey Kane got the fan vote a few years back and drove straight to victory lane, so Chase Elliott could do the same thing tonight. Yeah, see who takes the momentum with him, and Denny Hamlin, the Toyota winner, the only Toyota winner. In the All-Star race, tried to get that million dollars you had in the briefcase with the Bryson there. All-Star wins, Chevy 17 total, 11 for Ford, and one win for Toyota. And now, for the most famous words in motorsports, please welcome your Grand Marshal Triple Crown winner, Victor Espinoza. Drivers, it's time your engines. A different kind of horsepower <laughs> as we'll be watching him go tonight. Let's take you upstairs. Our all-star announced team, Darrell Waltrip, Jeff Gordon, and Mike Joy. Mike, you ready for a hot night? Thank you, Chris. Well, we certainly had one here in 92 when they built it as one hot night. And tonight is shaping up to be very much the same. In past all-star races, we've started the final segment with just half the field. But that was through attrition, <laughs> yeah, Darrell. Yeah. Not because we have removed everybody but 10 cars from that final stage. So this is an elimination race. Yeah, well, the thing is, I, I feel like I'm the patient. And my crew chief's the doctor. I can give you all the symptoms. I can tell you what's wrong with my car and tell you everything you need to know. But you're going to have to be the one to fix it. You're also going to have to be the one that tells me where I am. I got my hands full. These cars are evil to drive. They're fast. I got my hands full. Don't make me think about anything except driving. Help me. I need my team to help me tonight. Well, I have a prescription for you. I have one set of soft tires, the option tire that these teams can put on for any stage of this all-star race. That's a new wrinkle that NASCAR and Goodyear have offered. So, Jeff, when do you want those feel goods that set of soft tires. <laughs> well, in all star race, Mike, it's you have nothing to lose and a million dollars to gain. There's a lot on, at, at stake here, but I want grip. I want a little extra grip in those uh, green lettered sidewall soft option tires. Give you that extra grip, but you only have one set of them. When are you going to use them? If I've transferred through from the open, I want them right now. I'm starting in the back. I want to go to the front, but. If I'm in the all-star race, boy, I don't know. Do you save them till the end, or do you go maybe the second or third stage? I like the third stage. I think that's when I want to put them on, get myself in a position to, to be in that final 10. I that's when I'll use in them. In the second stage, so that I'm up front for the third stage, so I transfer to the final stage. Uh, we all agree. <laughs> Kyle Busch has never won a cup race 
at Charlotte Motor Speedway, but he comes in as the favorite at four to one. Pole sitter Kyle Larson, Martin Truex, who dominated here in the Memorial Day race last May. There are your odds. Who do you like? Wild horses. Wild horses. Run faster. Run faster. Run faster. Whatever it takes I Welcome to FS1's coverage of the Monster Energy All-Star Race. What a big night it's been already. Out in front of the field, two-time Baja 1000 champion B.J. Baldwin in the Monster Energy Trophy truck. B.J. actually drove all thousand miles of the Baja non-stop Ironman style. That monster's got over 800 horsepower. Here's the starting lineup for tonight's race. Kyle Larson won the pole here yesterday. Kyle Busch has never won a cup race here, but he'll start from the front row. Yeah, on row two, Kevin Harvick, and beside him in fourth, four-time All-Star winner Jimmy Johnson. Yeah, starting back there in the third row, Dale Earnhardt, Dale Earnhardt Jr., he won his first All-Star race. Wonder if he could win his last one. Brad Kozlowski, Matt Kenseth in row number four. And let's talk to our pole sitter as we get ready to race here. Hey, Kyle Larson, DW, you got me there, buddy? I got you. Man, you are on a row. Uh, you're the points leader. You've won a race. This this race falls right into your lap. How do you feel about your chances tonight, buddy? Yeah, this is a, uh, a lot of fun. You know, it's kind of like a you know, short track race, uh, short sprint race like what I'm used to. So it's going to be a lot of fun. We had a good qualifying effort yesterday put us on the pole. So... Hopefully you put this target Chevy in victory lane and be holding a million bucks at the end of the night. I like the million bucks, and your boss sitting down on the pit box. I know he likes a million bucks, so good luck, man. 
Yeah, Chip's raising for a lot of money this month, so uh, hopefully he can start out good for him. Chip Ganassi just got here on the chopper from Indianapolis to see Kyle Larson run tonight. Let's get down to pit road. Here's our all-star pit crew, Vince Welch. Thank you, Mike. You know, the 88 of Dale Earnhardt Jr. runs his final all-star race tonight. And you might think there would be some sentimental feelings in this pit box. And oh, sure, they'd love the one million bucks that goes with winning this race. But most importantly for this team, they want to learn something that pays off for them next week. Junior's never won the 600, and it's a major priority on his list before he retires. Matt Yoakum. Vince, one year ago, Daniel Suarez was a spectator for this event tonight. He's in the last row chasing that big giant deposit slip. Now Suarez is starting on the option tires. They're playing their strategic card early. He knows from practice his car's a little bit tighter on the options. It was tighter in the open. They made some significant adjustments, Jamie, hoping to make that one winning adjustment and uh, get their average much better for later on. Well, Kyle Busch has led 227 laps in previous All-Star races, but he has yet to get that elusive victory. Well, tonight could be the night. He's starting on the front row in a car that he was very happy with in practice. Good balance, great speed. Watch for the 18 team to put on four tires each stop. Larry Mack? Yeah, Jamie, not only is Daniel Suarez stuck on the option tires, Chase Elliott, Ryan Blaney as well. It's going to be fun to watch them come up through the field. Now, let's take a look at our weather here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. It is absolutely Gorgeous. In the low 80s, track temperatures coming down, gaining grip, not a drop of rain in the forecast. A race analysis, 70 laps, four stages, the first three 20 laps, final stage 10 green flag laps, pit road speed 45 miles per hour, and Mike, that grip level is a four. Here they come for a monster of an all-star race. Green flag, Kyle Larson, Kyle Busch, head them off to turn one. Lap one, Kyle Busch coming up from out of the pack for fourth. And look at this. Three wide, three wide, and three wide on the first no, lap. Four wide. <laughs> Get, getting tight. Really tight. Twelve cars under a blanket there. Close call for Kyle Busch. He drove deep into turn one really hard trying to get to Kyle Larson, and he overshot the corner, slid up the racetrack. I thought he was going to fall back a couple positions, but he's maintained second. Yeah, really nice job by Larson on that start, because Kyle Busch is the king of restarts, and Larson was able to beat him to turn one. Harvick in third, Kurt Busch fourth. Back here, Denny Hamlin battling Jamie McMurray for eighth. right behind them. Yeah, Junior fell back a little bit from the start. Mike putting down some incredibly fast laps. That first lap, 28-39. Wow. Those are some qualifying speeds already in this first couple of laps. Seven cars, single file, then this four-car pack, and then the balance of the field all together. Fifth place, Keselowski up high. Here comes Bush underneath and Matt Kenseth. I'm not really sure what the Gibbs guys could have learned from Suarez's win, but he, Suarez transferred in. He may have been able to give them a little bit of information that may have helped them to start this race. You see the two of Brad Keselowski fight hard with Kurt Busch. These guys, they realize every single position is going to matter in every one of these stages. There were three wide in the back and moving up the best on the option tire, Daniel Suarez, he's gained seven positions since the start. I just, I think that Suarez car, we saw that in the open. It is a fast car. And then you throw those green option tires on there. He could be somebody that would. Whoa, Whoa, going into turn one with Matt Kenseth on the inside. Great move by Matt. Boy, yeah, great job by Kurt Busch that that wasn't a big wreck. Yeah, that was cool. Heads prevailed there. Everybody gave a little. Martin Truex has dropped to the tail of the field, but look at this, three wide, down the front straight away and off into turn one. And it just tells you how good these guys are. To be able to do that with no incident, 
I don't even think there's any damage to any fenders nope. on those cars. I think they'll be okay in this race. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't <laughs> get away with one. Yeah, yeah stage one. I'm not sure that. Uh, I'm not sure that's going to be the case later on. You're watching the best stock car drivers in America, and you see why. Able to run three wide in such tight packs without content. Yeah, about 190 plus miles an hour off into these turns tonight. Now, Martin Truex has fallen to the rear. Jamie. He just came on the radio and told his team he has a real bad shake, like the left front is loose. He's not sure he's going to hang on here, but his team is getting ready in case he has to bring it down pit road. Oh, I would say he's one of the favorites in this race. He's been so fast on the mile and a half. When they come to the line, it'll be 12 to go in stage one. We'll keep it right here. You won't miss a thing. Eight laps to go in stage one. Kyle Larson leads Kyle Busch by 1.7 seconds. Here are Jeff's AARP keys to the drive. Green, green, and green. Starts and restarts offer a great opportunity to gain positions quickly, so be ready to make that big three wide move when the green flag waves. Each of these drivers will have one set of green letter Goodyear uh, option tires. These tires have more grip than the yellow letter Prime, so choose wisely when you bolt those on. Only 10 drivers will race in the final stage for the green, the $1 million payoff. So that's a million reasons to make that all-star move. And, and Mike, in every, every race, I don't care if it's 400 laps next Sunday night or 20 laps a night. You settle in at some point and you figure out, okay, this is what I got. We're going to have to wait till I get in the pits. We're going to have to make some changes, make some adjustments, see if we can get my car better. I think Kyle Larson settled in on lap one. Meanwhile, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is struggling. He's dropped 10 spots from the start of this race. Well, they were hoping that uh, as the sun went down and the uh, race turned into nighttime conditions that the car would handle better, but it hasn't been the case. As you see crew chief Greg Ives there on the right-hand side of the screen said they wanted to learn something for next week. So far, they've learned what not to do and how they don't want the race car. That's Thanks, a Rich. really difficult condition to fix when you're loose getting in, tight landing. You want to loosen the car for that tight. But boy, you can't afford to not be able to get into the corner, especially in an all-star race like this in the short uh, stages. Car's got too much wedge in it. When you're loose in, you're a little too much wedge, tight off. I'd say take some wedge out. That's what I'd do. Kyle Busch, two seconds back. His lap times pretty much mirror Larson's right now. Kevin Harvick currently third. 
right where he started. And today, a Steve Sinanen is sitting on the pit box with Kevin Harvick's team. He was chosen in the Bush Bucks loyalty program so that if Harvick wins the million, so does Steve. You can head to bushbucks.com for more info on that loyalty program. Now, Mike, you know, they take your average finishes. And uh, right now, that 88 and that 78 are in big trouble when it comes to trying to get a better, you know, get a good average finish over these next three uh, 20 lappers, or next two 20 lappers. Jamie, what's Steve going to do if he wins a million bucks? Yeah, he is a super fan. He's sitting right behind Rodney Childers, the crew chief. And if he wins a million bucks tonight, he wants to pay off his student loans. He is an accountant, and he wants to go to Disney World. He lives in Orlando. Makes sense. Okay. He's going to get to make a lot of trips to Disney World with That's a million right. bucks. He can just build his, own, he can build his own rides. Pit Road is closed with two laps to go in stage one. Kyle Larson led 18 laps last year, but got into the wall while leading with two to go. Joey Logano passed him. Larson ended up 16th. Well, that's a much smarter race car driver this year than he was a year ago over here. This kid a better is a race on car it. as well. Well, the cars are better. Everything about that program, Chip Ganassi and that bunch over there have done a great job of really getting themselves where they are right now. It's a car to beat just about every week. Point standing leader. Coming to the green and white flag that signifies the end of stage one. So Larson, with this win, is guaranteed a spot in the final 10 lap shootout. As is each stage winner. From there on, it's based on your average finish of the three stages. Congratulations, Kyle. Kyle Larson has won stage one here at Charlotte in the all-star race. Here are your Ford performance track facts. Joey Logano in a Team Penske Ford is defending champion of the all-star race. Brad Keselowski led the most laps in three of the last five races.
pit road will be open this time. Who will take? Ah, there's a set of option tires. Yeah. The so green see a few, uh, lettered sidewalls. Yeah, we see a few on the wall right now. Suarez, Blaney, and Elliott used them in stage one. Matt. And Mike, Jimmy Johnson was basing his car off of the 42 of Kyle Larson. He said he just could not arc it into the corner, much like Kyle Larson could. They had some green, the option tires, up on the wall for Jimmy Johnson. They said they were going to fix up that car. Meanwhile, Larson said his car is great on exit, but they're going to make an adjustment, Jamie, to help the entry. It was too free. And Kyle Busch won the truck race last night, saying he's a little bit tight, just wants to free it up for that long run. And Kevin Harvick said he can't go full throttle on exit. Wedge adjustment there at Ford Tire Stop Primaries. Wipe the grill. See who wins the race off here, road, Mike. Wow, that 20 car, Mike, I don't, he's got something seriously wrong here. From the left front, uh, Matt Kenseth's car. Oh, we got Ooh. a leak, Matt. Stay as low as you can. You're going to have to bring it back. Looks like an oil leak is foiled. Matt Kenseth's run. One stage complete in Stock Car Racing's All-Star Night. Getting ready for the start of stage two as Matt Kenseth's car is pushed to the garage area yeah. with an oil leak. And oil, Martin oil. Truex will start in the rear. And Jackman was over the wall too soon for Truex's pit stop, putting on the option tires from the uh, pit road officiating system. You see the line here, and you see the guy over the wall way before, uh, before Mark got there. And by the way, Mike, that was an oil cooler, broken uh, oil cooler on the 20 car. Now, on the option tire for segment two, Jimmy Johnson, Denny Hamlin, Chris Buescher, Martin Truex, and Clint Boyer, five drivers, have taken the option. So what that means, there's only 11 drivers on the racetrack that have, they've not used their option tires. And remember, for the final stage, if you put the option green sidewall tires on, you have to start behind everyone with the yellow sidewalls. how those would look on the cover of a video game. Let's say NASCAR Heat 2, because the race for the cover of NASCAR Heat 2 is on. In segment two of the All-Star Race, Toyota drivers Kyle Busch and Martin Truex Jr. are racing for the right to be featured on the cover of the upcoming release. A 
of NASCAR Heat 2. And Larry, that tells me that a lot of these teams are thinking that track position is going to be really important in that final 10 lap stage and that they're going to want to be on the tires, uh, you know, the yellow sidewall tires, and they're going to use those greens pretty much in these first three stages. Yellow, green, or concrete tires. <laughs> Clean air will still be king. That's right. You give me four tires, put me up front, I'll take the, I'll take the primes every day. But I tell you, the guy to keep an eye on is Jimmy Johnson because he's on the green tire, he's on the option tire, and he's a car that could use, do something with him. Larry, technically, what is the difference between the prime tire with the yellow lettering and the option tire with the green? Well, it's more grip, it, 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 and you can run faster speeds. And what we saw in practice is maybe three to four tenths of a lap, but you pay a price for it, as we saw with Suarez. On the end of the run, there's more give up at the end of the run. So it's a gamble. Five drivers on the option tire for segment two as cleanup continues here in Charlotte. Ready to start stage two. Let's take a listen at how Kyle Larson spotter Derek Nealon helps him worry less with Liberty Mutual Insurance spotter coverage. Anybody making the top or anything work? Uh, so the 18 was the only one that tried to move up through one and two. Everybody else was locked at the bottom over there. Um, he tried that right side top seam uh, through one and two, the lap I told you about. And the following lap, he rode the rim. And uh, he was about a tenth and a half better when he rode the rim than when he had his right side on the top seam. And that's how your spotter helps you worry less. I can know the difference. Perch. You know the difference in that 42 and all those cars around him? That 42 kid, Kyle Larson, he wants a million. Those other guys, they got me. <laughs> <laughs> a million means something to him. That's right, it means something to him. <laughs> Out of turn four, and there is the Geico restart zone where Kyle Larson will restart this race. Stage two, green flag. Jimmy Johnson taking those green option tires to the outside already. Jimmy says, I know I got grip. I know I got grip for a little while. And Denny Hamlin right with him. 
And there he goes. He's going to shoot right into third place. That's a car I'm really anxious to see how this 48 does on these green tires, because that's a great car, and it'll be interesting to see how those tires perform. Hamlin coming hard for fifth, also on the option tires. Boy, Kevin Harvick did wow. not get a good restart with Jimmy Johnson going on the outside of him. This is costing him a lot of Inside. positions. Two and the two, still there. Seventh place. Jimmy Johnson made a big run on Kyle Busch off of turn two, trying to take advantage of that extra grip. Where I really was impressed with 48, he knew he had to grip. He went to the outside, and he was able to shoot up there in the third spot. And then in about five to eight laps, either Jimmy Johnson's going to say we made a good call, or he's going to say, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm with Larry. It's how long does it last, because it's great to have that grip early, but will it last over the 20-lap run? Option tires or not, How's anybody going to catch Kyle Larson? There's yeah. Jimmy's opportunity right there. He's going to take advantage of that slip up by the 18 of Kyle Busch. But right about now is when those when those uh, option tires are going to be at their best. About the next four or five laps, then it's going to be a question of will they hang on? Nobody on the option tire is lapping this car track as fast. <laughs> no, That's Kyle Larson no, in the lead. No, he's in a league of his own right now. He's going somewhere. Clean air is your friend. Let's see what the lap time for this time back. But Johnson got a nice clean lap there. 42 ran. Pretty even. And Jimmy about uh, seven one hundredths quicker. You know, as fast as Kyle Larson is, do you put the green tires on that car? I put them back in the truck. <laughs> <laughs> well, Get him out of my pit. <laughs> well, and, you know, when you have that extra grip, there's a chance that it could change the balance of the race car. So, yeah, yeah for Kyle Larson, be, be pretty careful doing messing up anything that you've got going on right now. Yeah, I think he's got a car that's uh, just on a rail. You just got to keep doing what you're doing. Casey Kane restarted 11th. He is 10th. Kevin Harvick restarted third. Or no, eighth. He's eighth. Restarted eighth is eighth. And remember, Just Mike, ahead. that 48 car was running fourth at the end of that first stage. So it's not like he put those tires on and it gave him a great big burst of speed. He had a good car at the end of that first stage. Somebody is doing a nice job that came out of the open was Clint Boyer. He had a very fast car, won that first stage in the open. He's already up inside the top 10 in ninth position here. Yeah, and, and so is Suarez. I mean, Suarez is right there in 11th. Uh, Vince? Yeah, the 14 of uh, Clint Boyer put his green tires on, so a little more grip. And as uh, DW said, in the early going of the run, that's when you got to make the move. And Clint's making the most of it on those uh, green, softer tires here to start this segment. 13 laps to go in stage two of the Monster Energy All-Star Race.
Across the line goes Kyle Larson, 1.6 seconds up on Jimmy Johnson with eight to go in stage two of this four-stage All-Star night. Kyle Busch, 2.3 seconds back. He'll be our Toyota top performer at this stage in the event. 2.4 seconds off the lead. Penny Hamlin in the top five on the option tire. Daniel Suarez has been battling Chase Elliott back and forth for 10th. And Martin Truex has rebounded from 19th up to 13th in this second. Yeah, Mike, stage. I, I, I tell you, I believe that the tires on the 48 are starting to give up. Kyle Busch in that uh, Carl Eminem's car is starting to close the gap. I mean, he's really gained on him the last two or three laps. Yeah, Jimmy Johnson lost two tenths that lap to Kyle Larson and Kyle Busch. Well, that raises the question on when do you put the option tires on or do you? Yes. Jamie. Well, Kevin Harvick's team's really been keeping an eye on the performance of the cars who've been running the three sidewall tires. They told me coming in, their plan was, we're going to put those option tires on in the last stage. But they said, after what we've seen, we've changed our mind. We need to go earlier. They'll put them on the next stop. They also are struggling with air pressure because the track temp has come down so much since practice. They're not sure where they need to be. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm just a third stage man myself. I'm going to put them on. That's when I'm going to put them on and get all I can out of them. Maybe I can transfer. Hey, guys, just remember, you only have four sets of tires total for this race, including what you started the race on. That's three sets of the prime, one set of the options. I think the reason the audible is being called is we're not seeing that big of a gain. And remember, I repeat myself, if you put the greens on for the final segment, you have to start behind every driver that has the yellow prime zone. And it's, it's I just don't see that being a big those those green tires being that big of an advantage when you have to start behind people with the yellow. When well, there's so much grip as the track temperature is cooled down, it's just a lot of grip in the racetrack. Everybody's glued to the bottom. That's why I'm glad I use mine in sec in stage two. Get them out of the way. True. We're gonna ride shotgun with Joey Logano with the Coca-Cola. Share a Coke, share a ride. The defending champion of the All-Star Race in 12th place right now. Really thought that Logano would be somebody to get up there and be challenging for these uh, for these stage wins, but just hadn't hadn't had a car tonight. Yeah, this is his kind of race. He loves restarts and taking the three wide, moving up through the field, but uh, just yeah, just doesn't quite have it tonight. Fifth place with two laps to go in stage two. Yeah, and Denny Hamlin took those option tires. We are starting to see him fade a little bit as Jamie McMurray makes that pass. But remember, that's his backup car. And you know, he, he qualified. He had to make a pit stop, come down pit road at full speed without ever even being in that race car. So I think they've done a pretty nice job getting that thing where it is. I still think those option tires, they are a game on the short run. And, and it's so difficult to get a big run on somebody, as we see Keselowski getting a run on the 11, that uh, Jimmy Johnson's been able to hold second place ahead of the 18, even though he's fading. Final lap of stage two. What were we saying about concrete tires? Maybe that's what we ought to put on Kyle Larson's car. <laughs> Maybe somebody field. will be able to pass him. Yeah, you said he's fading. Yeah, there's 42 is fading out of sight. Now don't forget, they got to come down and get another, do another pit stop. Larson, Johnson, the Bush brothers, McMurray, the top five in stage two. Then Hamlin, Keselowski, Harvick, Boyer, and Elliott. Chip Ganassi racing has got it going on tonight. A perfect score for Kyle Larson so far in the Monster Energy All-Star Race.
Yellows. Yeah. Tonight, Monster Energy brought their smoke show from the fan zone onto the track for pre-race to lay some rubber down for the NASCAR drivers. If you're coming out to a race this season, you'll find all these guys and more at Monster Energy in the fan zone each week. So the cover of NASCAR Heat 2 coming September 12th will be Kyle Busch. Congratulations. Pretty amazing paint job on that M&M's car tonight. The road's open, Vince. Well, a great night for Chip Ganassi Racing. Kyle Larson leads, and Jamie McMurray pits from the fifth spot. They're going to put on the green lettered softer option tires here on this stop. Really happy with their speed at the end of that run, Matt. Kurt Busch, Joey Logano going option tires. They're going to go option as well on the 42 of Kyle Larson. A little too free on entry that time. Jimmy Johnson's car, the option tires snugged him up, Jamie. And the 18 said the car definitely took off better there after those last adjustments of four tires stopped here. Softer tires wipe the grill for the 18 with that awesome paint. Clint Boyer and Ryan Blaney gambled with two tires mm -hmm. and moved to the front of the pack. We talk about <laughs> options. I got an option. Two tires. That's it, brother. That's it. <laughs> Stage three of four coming up on the All-Star Night. Boyer couldn't have done. With every all-star race come unintended consequences, <laughs> unanticipated situations. See those green tires on the left? See those yellow tires on the right? The rule is you must put all four option tires on the car. You can't put just two green tires on. So they did that on the last stop. They put all four green ones on. Now what, Larry? Well, that's obviously they only have one set of green ones. They did exactly what the rule says. They put them all on at once to get track position. Michael Bugaravich brought Clint Boyer in and put the right side yellow zone, and we are being told that that's totally legal. So wow. you don't have to keep four green tires on. You just got to put them all on at once. <laughs> there, wow. How there, about I that? Guess, I know those are option tires, but I did not know that was an option. Oh, I love the crew chiefs when they when you throw something at them, 
they will diagnose it from every hey, single look angle. That, look at that smoker yeah. all the way yeah. with his face. He's he saying, knew he was about to do that. So in football, you'd call that a double reverse. <laughs> I call wow. it a double whammy. Brad Kozlowski had a loose lug nut, came back in to tighten it. Wow. And Clint Boyer is going to restart at the head of the field with Ryan Blaney. Mike, I asked Larry McGrone, I said, Larry, is there any way you can who do this deal? Yes, and there, yeah, it, there is. it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how about it, Vince? Well, crew chief Mike Bugaravich, what was the explanation you got there from the uh, NASCAR officials? Uh, they didn't they didn't say anything as far as the explanation on the rules, but I mean, I read the entry blanks and stuff before I got here and I never saw it in there, so I kind of had planned to do this and if it's not in there, I guess I can do it, right? That's why they make the big money with those kind of brains right there, Mike Bugaravich. Well done. See, that's the way I, I, I like operating that way. We're not rule breakers, we're rule makers. Mm -hmm. That's what the all-star race creates. I can see you with that rule book. You've got that screwdriver <laughs> jammed in right between the lines, and you're going to pry it open as big a space as possible, aren't you? That's your job, brother. Yes, That's your is. job. <laughs> All right, Dale Earnhardt Jr. talking about tires. You should have gave me like a green left run. Yeah, yeah, I put them on in sets, and uh, you got to put them on in sets. Like, you can't just put one on. You got to put them all four to one time there. Yeah, I was just joking. <laughs> I, I, I'll gather all that. <laughs> oh, well, you got to love the sense of humor of Dale Earnhardt Jr. He's been having some fun with those guys. All right, let's add up the running positions at the end of each stage because the average after three stages will determine which three, which 10 drivers move on. Kyle Larson has a perfect score of two. Two first place finishes. Kyle Busch five, Jimmy Johnson six. They're in really good shape. Harvick, Busch, Keselowski, Hamlin and McMurray in great shape. Boyer and Suarez kind of right there on the edge. It'll be the average running order of the end of the three stages that determines who goes into the final round of 10 we know Kyle Larson will be in there because he has won two stages. He's asking back in. And they're going to put on right side prime tires. Are they going to go for four? They are. Let's take a look at how our Coca-Cola family of drivers are faring tonight after 40 of 70 laps. Mike, he just had the he just had the tires on the car. Can he come back in and take them off? <laughs> You're asking me? <laughs> <laughs> I just, I That's one of those crew chiefs. What, what did I just see? <laughs> All right, let's ask Larry. Larry, we'll put it on your shoulders. Well, I, my pad's smoking over here. <laughs> I'll bet. <laughs> I only see two drivers that has not used their green tires yet, and that's Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in 17, Dale Earnhardt Jr. in 88. I don't think we missed anybody, but that's the only two. All right, we're looking now. He has green. So that's probably why they did what they did. Speaking of green, green flag. Out of the Geico restart zone and headed for turn one. Boyer. Blaney, Larson Johnson. I think Larson just has to mind his manners here just for a little bit and let these guys sort out a little bit. Now we're told that since Keselowski put the green tires on, he has now officially used them. Even though they changed back to the prime tire before the restart. I was just about Three to say wise. this race has been not, a little too tame. Wow. There's no way that that's going to continue. This is not going well for not the for 40 Boyer. You know what happens when you mix green and yellow? <laughs> you get blue, and that's what Boyer is. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, like blue by you. Yeah, kind of <laughs> like that. <laughs> Get a pass for the lead here outside Jimmy Johnson. Johnson, Blaney, Kurt Bush, McMurray, Kyle Bush. Remember, Blaney took two tires. Whoa, what a move. Goodness gracious. Hey, who else has a really fast race car? It's Larson's teammate right there, Jamie McMurray. Woo. These guys are starting to act like they're racing for a million dollars. 
Well, I don't know. McMurray tried to go to the outside. That did not work. Oh, look at that. Pass by 41 coming back to the inside. On you tight. Yeah, baby. McMurray didn't give him any room, and here comes Harvick also right into the mix. On the inside, in fifth place, Harvick. Bumper outside, outside. Look at this. Oh, watch this. Inside, by Harvick. outside. Clowns to the left. Jokers to the right. Stuck in the middle. <laughs> and Larson coming as well. Wow. Blaney's car's really starting to fall off on those two tires. He's going to go. They're going to take him three wide. Oh, yeah. All right, we listened in on Brad Kozlowski's team on the decision to put the green tires on and take them right off. We're going to take these tires off and put the other ones on, Paul, while we're doing this. Uh, at least then we'd have the soft for the end. It sounds to me like they chose, they, they called an audible. They want those green option tires for that last 10 lap segment. We'll see, Jamie. And the two of Brad Kozlowski had a vibration, so they came down after they initially put the option tire on and they tightened the fronts, he still had it. He came in and that's when Brad said, do you just want to take these off? So they took the options off. They only ran those couple of laps under caution while I'm watching his team right now, gluing them up so they have those options available at the end. Exactly, Jamie. That's what I was going to say is you only had four sets of tires total to run this race, including what you started to race on. So they have no more sticker tires to use. Yeah, once they bolt them on, that's considered using that set, correct, Larry? We are double checking with NASCAR, but we are being told that once you use the option tires, you cannot put them back on the car. In other words, you have one option to use them. Uh oh, 21. Something looks like something may have happened to 21 car. Yes, it's almost like he has a, a, a tire going down. He's really been struggling these last few laps. Yeah, he's. And down, Chase okay. Elliott got into the wall last time around. On the right, there's Elliott. Ooh. Yeah. Here in the quad oval, near the start finish line. I've done that a time or two off of turn four. It's just so tight coming off there. And if you're behind somebody else, it's easy just to take the air off the car. Andy Hamlin making a pretty aggressive move here on Clint Boyer. Yeah, Hamlin, Hamlin Boyer took two. Hamlin got up against the wall off four there. I don't think it hurt the car because he's obviously going pretty fast, but he did scrape the wall a little bit off four earlier. Be 11 to go when Jimmy Johnson comes back. He's got to have company here pretty quick, Mike. That 41 car and the four both are closing fast. Martin Truex battling Hamlin for 10th. In the last 18 All-Star races, only one driver has multiple wins. That driver is Jimmy Johnson with four. Going for five tonight. The junior just. Jamie? Well, NASCAR just updated the two team told crew chief Paul Wolf, you are not able to use those option tires again. You already had them on your race car. Paul told his driver, take care of the tires you have. That's all we have. Wow. So Dale Earnhardt Jr. Yeah. got up into the wall last lap. Pretty hard too, Mike. Yeah. Got a lot of right side damage. He is 19th and his total finishes do not look there like they're going to put him in the final round for his final all-star race. I think a lot of this is again, as we mentioned before, he's testing for next week. They, they, they knew in the first two stages things weren't going the way they wanted to. Let's let's go out. Let's try the high line. Let's take take uh, you know try, try some adjustments on the car and get ready for the 600 next week. Here we got a battle for second here. Got Kevin Harvey getting by his teammate there, Kurt Busch, with the 42. Really, uh, Larson right there coming back into the picture as well. Jimmy Johnson is wanting these laps to run out and run out now. Kyle Larson is the only driver in the top five who has not yet won the All-Star race. Boy, he came close last year, led a bunch of laps, but got up into the wall. Joey Logano ended up winning. I think you see, though, what clean air and being out front means. I mean, Jimmy Johnson sitting there, he's got the lead. And we know how good Kyle Larson is, and he's having trouble just getting back to the, getting around the third and fourth, uh, second and third place. Well, and you got to remember, Larson's in a really good position here because after this stage, it's going to come down to average finish over those first three stages and how you come down pit road to do that pit stop. Right now, Kyle Larson is still in this position, has the best average. 
That's what he's banking on, Jeff. It's got to be. And what that will mean is at the end of this stage, Kyle Larson will be lined up first to lead everybody onto pit road for the final stop. And I also think, you know, he put those option tires on. His car seems to really like the prime tire yeah. on these options. It, it just it didn't take off on the restart. Really hasn't been as good. But watch what happens when he puts those primes back on. All right, we're going to hear from the Brad Keselowski team about this puzzling tire situation. Well, and I talked to the NASCAR control dot tower, and if you read the entry blank, it says when you put those option tires on, they have to be sticker brand new tires. Even riding around under caution for two laps, they are no longer considered sticker brand new tires. So to their point, they're going to have to stay out at this next caution and just try to get track position. Wow. I, I think one thing we learned you don't want to put two uh, primes and two options. <laughs> oh, no. you want to, to, the right's being yellow and the left's being green. Then work out to go for Clint Boyer. Don't trick yourself. <laughs> That's right. Four and a half laps to go in stage three, and Kevin Harvick is there for third place. Harvick Larson. Is, Harvick's been closing down every lap. Don't know if he's going to have enough time or not, but he's going to get there. And now in Jimmy Johnson's position, maybe even if he falls back to second, I believe he'll be the second best on the average. So he's in a pretty good position here, but obviously he wants to win this stage. Average of the three stage finishing positions determines who gets into the final round with stage winner Kyle Larson and either Jimmy Johnson or Kevin Harvick here in three more laps. Boy, Harvey got a nice run off of two that time. He is coming down that back straightaway. Some ponies up under that hood. Look at him close. And he's starting to move around a little bit. You can see he gives up a little bit of speed, getting in the corner. Ooh, a little loose there, but look at the run he gets up off the corner. But watch out behind you, because here comes Kyle Larson. Turn three, one car way up high. Ryan Newman. He may have had contact no with Denny Hamlin. And he makes it to pit road. Newman was 12. He gets Ooh, what off of turn Ooh. two. They make contact. It's all it takes sometimes to cut that right front tire. Newman goes to the garage. And we stay green. Final lap of stage three. Ten drivers go to the finale. I think Larson may able to get around on Kevin Harvick here coming into down the back and in three and four. It's going to be a mighty tight race. All three of these these first three drivers are all going to move on to the final. And so is Kurt Busch in fourth and Jamie McMurray in fifth. The rest will have to sort out. Jimmy Johnson wins stage three from Harvick, Larson, Kurt Busch and McMurray. Kyle Busch, Logano, Elliott, Blaney, and Hamlin, the top ten. Wow. We're going to ratchet it up a notch for the final round as only green flag laps will count. Congrats to Jimmy Johnson, who wins stage three.
Welcome back to Stock Car Racing's All-Star Night, where Kyle Larson with a total finish of five, a win, a win, and a second, or a win, a win, and a third. That's a total of five, or an average of under two. And he's gonna lead everybody into the final round. 10 drivers to advance, led by Kyle Larson and Jimmy Johnson, who were stage winners and are guaranteed to participate in the final round by those stage wins. Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, Kurt Busch all had good consistent runs. And averages of four or five. And we'll await work from NASCAR on the final rundown of 10 drivers. In case of a tie, the tie is broken by the higher finish in stage three. And I believe there is a tie. Joey Logano and Chase Elliott. And Joey Logano will break the tie because he finished seventh in stage three and Chase Elliott finished eighth. Is it between Boyer or? Clint Boyer. Yeah, I think it's Clint Boyer. Clint Boyer. And boy, how about that decision to take two right side tires? I think that actually cost Clint Boyer from being in this final I round. Because he had a good race car up to the Yeah, he had that. a good enough race yeah. car to go race up there. So sometimes you outsmart yourself. I'm impressed with Logano because he has not had a very good yep. night. No. Don't count him out yet. Well, th this 10 lap shootout, don't count anybody out. They might wad them all up down here. So Clint Boyer with an average of 10.6 is going to miss it. Yeah, I mean, we finished better in the 22. Two out of three segments is the only one we didn't finish better than them, so. You would think that was, that's the overall. That's, uh, I don't know. Who knows? Oh, if it's tied, just put 11 cars in it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's a plan. I like where they're going with that. All I like right. that plan. Logano finished 14th, 12th, and 7th. Elliott, 13th, 10th, and 8th. That's a tie. Boyer, 12th, 9th, and 11th, a total of 32. Logano and Elliott, a total of 31. You divide by three to get the numbers that were on the screen. So as we get ready for the final stage of 10 green flag only laps, let's take a look at tonight's Credit One Bank ones to watch. Yeah, Kyle Larson's just having a, an all-star kind of season, maybe even a championship type of a season, and having an all-star night. I think he goes on to win his first all-star event. Mr. Where did he come from? Kevin Harvick, he won this race in 2007. He's finished second in two of the last three all-star races. He is wanting that first win in a four. Are, are you kidding me? Come on, guys. This guy right here, before he got four wins already in the all-star race, when this car runs up front, he's the guy to beat. I love a good restart. And another cat that loves a good restart is Kyle Busch. Watch this kid go when they throw the green flag. The pit crew has been on game. They will be tough in this final 10 lapper. Well, I guarantee you, Jamie McMurray will make a bold move in these <laughs> 10 laps. Will it be a winning move? We'll see. Checkers or wreckers. <laughs> Let's have a look at our Bush race summary after three of four stages. Kyle Larson wins the first two, leading all 40 laps. Jimmy Johnson wins stage three after leading 19 of 20 laps. You know, if you're wondering why NASCAR chose to do that average. It's because in the past, if you've won a stage, you just fall to the back. You can just ride around. Not yep. tonight. You've yep. got to race hard for every single position. Yep. There's another reason average finish was important because that's how they have realigned those 10 drivers behind the pace car. That's how they will come to pit road and then it will be a normal pit stop win the race off pit road. So that's why that average finish was important. Transfer to the final stage be lined up as far front as possible for to come to this pit road for a pit stop. Well, we know Brad Keselowski is out of tires. I wonder, Larry, will he even pit? 
Why, why, I, I wouldn't pit, no. Clean air. I mean, you're going to come in and take off 20-lap tires and put on, yeah, they'll be cold, but you're putting on 20-lap tires. But listen, I don't guys, think he has an option. Those first five cars, that, I mean, that's the top five qualifiers. Those are the guys that all started up front. All right. And there comes Brad staying out. Everybody else is in. Vince. Well, the one of Jamie McMurray, they discussed whether to go with two tires, but they've settled on four. He says it's just a tick too snug on the bottom, so they'll help him with some air pressure to free it up. Matt and Kyle Larson's team, they've been stout all year on pit road, looking for another great performance. Tight end traffic. The car was good when it was in clean air. No fuel on the 48. That should help give more nose weight and make it a little bit tighter for this run. Jamie? Kevin Harvick really liked that option tire with that big air pressure adjustment. The regular tires going back on a four tire stop wipes the grill and so drag race down to finish. Who is it? The 48 wins the race off pit road. That looked like Z-Max four wide dragway next door. Wow. This is amazing. <laughs> Look at this. Jimmy got a little bit of an edge over everybody else. The rest of them are bundled up. Boy, does that 48 team just know how to step up when things you. are on the line or what? That guy, he's a money man. Well, nobody else has a $10 bill on their helmet. <laughs> Alexander Hamilton's picture, <laughs> exactly that is. Right. Brad Keselowski. Was it a strategy error or is it going to fall in their lap? He'll restart first. We're about to find out. Just talking during the break, it's been way too calm. Mm -hmm. I think things are about to heat up here. 10 and green flag laps to settle it. Especially with Brad Keselowski on four older tires. He's going to spin the tires. He's got Kyle Busch right behind him. He's not going to be patient. Somehow or another, the word mayhem comes to mind. Now, uh, Chase Elliott came to pit road to pull a fender out. Make sure they didn't have a tire rub. We started with 20. Matt Kenseth out with an oil leak. Ryan Newman uh, got into the wall. They did not make it to the end of stage three. And eight drivers eliminated. Best 10 average finishes out there now. And here comes Logano down pit road. 
Guys, I want you to take a look at Jimmy Johnson in that 48 car nose. I think everybody added tape to the front end because putting that tape on the front end, it helps the downforce of the car, helps it to turn, and helps it drag. Now let's take a look at our Ford cutaway car at our grill opening. Now the grill opening is down right in this area right there. That's the grill opening. So the more tape you can put on that, like we've seen on that 48 car, it just stops the airflow through there. Still has some airflow, but it really helps the speed of the car. But you know what? 10 laps and a million bucks, we're not worried about a water temperature gauge. It's a lot of tape. I don't Jordan. know what they're putting water in at 22. They're getting him all watered up, ready to go. <laughs> and adding tape, I bet. Oh yeah, they're gonna get him cooled down and tape him up solid. <laughs> They better hurry though. Yeah. He's gonna be he's gonna be late to the party. Better go, dude. Uh, Don't speed. Keslowski's Ford, Johnson Chevrolet on the front row. Toyota's in row two for Kyle Busch and Hamlin. Chevrolet's in row three. Teammates Larson and McMurray. Row four, Fords for Kurt Busch and Kevin Harvick. Row five, Elliott and uh, Blaney now and Boyer. As we get set for the restart to settle this with 10 green flag laps for a million dollars to win. Here we go. And there we go. Great. <laughs> I mean, the cop is not going to waste any time. He's not getting around his 22. Oh, the 42. Car. Larson gets in the left rear of the two. Yikes who pins Hamlin up against the wall, but Murray takes off. I didn't think the 22 would catch this crowd, but he is coming up to the back of the field ahead of steam. He got quite a running start. He did. Uh, I think the Levin's got a tire run. Yeah, big smoker there. Took a hard hit from Kozlowski. Kyle Busch has never won a cup race at Charlotte Motor Speedway, points race, all-star race, or otherwise. Oh, Jimmy Johnson just got down on the apron trying hard to catch Kyle Busch and almost lost it. How is that not a wreck on that restart? Hard to believe. It's a seven-time champion, that's hell. <laughs> what if they need two wins, I mean. Last night, here at the Speedway, Kyle Busch stole all the candy from those kids in the truck race, won all three stages. This was just textbook by Kyle Busch. He it knew was. the two was going to spin the tires. Kyle Larson wanted to follow him through there. Wow. Incredible job save. by Brad Keselowski yeah, not right to spin there, out. The 11 got in trouble. And Jimmy Johnson is in the tire tracks of Kyle Busch. Remember, Kyle Busch has never won the All-Star race, never won a race here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. But, boy, he's led plenty of laps. Well, that special paint job they got on that car tonight might just pay off. They might want to run that more than once. Don't count out Kyle Larson, just seven tenths of a second back after winning stages one and two. All it takes is Jimmy Johnson to get side by side with the 18 of Kyle Busch, and that's going to bring Kyle Larson right into the mix. I just don't think they can get there. That 18 car, when you put him out front, clean air, and a million dollars at stake, going to be a hard, hard kept catch. Denny Hamlin has come to pit road with a tire rub. And now there are nine. He pulled away just a slight bit there yep. off of turn two. Got him a little breathing room. Boy, those cars are, all those front cars are glued right on that white line, right on the bottom of the racetrack. Halfway in the final stage. Fastest laps that we've seen all day long, down the 28 second <laughs> yeah, bracket. That's amazing. Well, you run two qualifying laps. I mean, this is like the, we saw them put tape on the cars. Everything about the car is taped up. This is max speed. Larson was fastest on that lap. Matt. And Mike, Kurt Busch just told his team something either fell off of the 42 or out from underneath the 42, but I just ran it over. Well, could have been his lucky charm from stage one and two. <laughs> we know. Oh, Larson just got a problem going into one. No, I, I think he's chose to go to the high, high side, DW. I, I think he realized he's not going to be able to get by Jimmy Johnson unless I, he tries something different. I thought I saw a little smoke. Maybe it drove it in so hard, like a little right front tire smoke, but it looked like it was a little smoke. Of all the all-star winners, it took Tony Stewart the longest to notch his first one. He did it in his 11th start. This is Kyle's 12th try to win the all-star race.
Larson, Larson is riding that wall now. He said, well, it's not working around the bottom. I got to go to the top. But he was not as fast as lap, that lap as Bush or Johnson. Sometimes it takes a lap or two to build up that right front tire, work that outside lane to find the speed. It doesn't come immediately in the first corner. Yeah, I think you got to get your rhythm. Once you've been hooking that bottom, now you got to get up around the top. A little bit different getting off, getting on places in the throttle. That time, oh, Bush was fast as Larson second, Johnson third. Yeah, Larson's starting to find something up high. He's just running out of laps. Yeah, he's going to probably kick himself for not getting up there sooner. That's his. That's just where he's his best. I know everybody's running the bottom, but this kid, when he gets it working the wall, he's he's hard to get hold of. The white flag waves. One lap to go. Sponsored by Credit One Bank. For Kyle Larson, he just wants to pass Jimmy Johnson. For Kyle he, Busch, he wants that million dollars. No, he wants that 42 to pass Jimmy Johnson because that'll slow them both down. There he goes. Larson to the bottom. Wow, what slide a job. move by Larson. Slide Larson job, second. slide job. Here comes Johnson back on the outside, but out front, the candy man, Kyle Busch, wins the all-star race. Wow. After 12 years of trying. Kyle Larson second, 1.27 seconds back. Good job, everybody. Way to hang. You did it, man. Proud of you. Good job, Larson. Good job, team. Got that monkey off her back. Jimmy Johnson third, Kurt Busch. Awesome job, team. Way to dig in there, boys. Nice stop of the day. That's all we wanted. Awesome. Yes. Kurt Busch fourth, Jamie McMurray fifth, and Harvick Elliott, Logano, Keslowski, Hamlin. I don't buy a lot of M&Ms. Such a total team effort on pit road, that restart, getting themselves in position to take advantage of that opportunity, and then those final 10 laps, perfect by Kyle Busch. Watch this. This is one of the best passes I've seen in a long time. Watch Kyle Larson. You think he's going to go to the outside? No way. He goes right to the bottom, drives in, and slides up. Watch this slide job by Kyle Larson. That's a dirt track move right there. It was, it was awesome. <laughs> Kyle Busch taking home the checkered flag is tonight's Sunoco fueling victory. This may take a while. That's Maybe he may be here a while. <laughs> He's the 23rd different driver to win an all-star race and the 16th different winner in the last 19 years. I think he wanted to add to the smoke show. Yeah. Uh, well, it is Smoke's birthday. Happy birthday, Tony Stewart. Hey, that's his first cup win over here, guys. That's, that's right. Time. And look how excited he is about it. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's the race. second all-star win for Joe Gibbs Racing and Toyota. Swept the weekend. He won last night. Well, that start taking advantage of the worn tires on Brad Keselowski's car ahead of him made all the difference. Well, Keselowski, he couldn't put up a fight. And, and Kyle timed it perfectly, got down under him, got the lead, and drove away. So Brad, he knew he couldn't put up a fight. Let's go back and take a look at that start of the final stage. Now, this is easier said than done because you've got to time it just right. The two actually got a pretty decent start. And then look at the momentum and how he timed it right at the start finish line. You can't pass before the start finish line. He stays out of the grass. And not only does he clear the two, he clears the 48 of Jimmy Johnson. Oh, look at that two. Wow. Let's join Matt Yoko. And you just lived it. You just saw a chance to watch it over again. Obviously, probably row two would have been better to restart. Yeah, I made a lot happen from row two tonight. Um, when you're the second place car, you know, you can't jump the leader, but everybody's second, third, fourth row is gonna jump um, and do what they can to roll up on the situation. So I was really hopeful with Brad being on old tires and being on the bottom, that he'd be able to hold that lane back, um, especially Kyle with how good he is on the restarts. And it just didn't happen, he got in there. Um, I got a decent start. Um, looked like 11 spun tires real bad behind me, wasn't able to push me and help get me going. Um, and I had a couple shots at him. He wasn't handling too well to start the run, but I just I just drove too hard. I could see a million dollars out the windshield and um, just drove this low Chevy way too hard in the corner a couple times and gave up some ground. But um, strong performance all night long to sit there and run, you know, top two, three, four all night was a great sign for this, this low Chevrolet. And we'll 
learn a little bit tonight, come back next weekend and have some more fun. Jimmy Johnson, third in the All-Star. Vince? When a million bucks is on the line and there's no points at stake, there's not much satisfaction in second place for Kyle Larson. Was the restart, I know you were watching the restart there on the replay, was that the difference at the finish? No, I think the difference was, uh, I mean, my pit crew's been awesome all year, so I don't want to take anything away from them. Uh, we, you know, we came down pit road the leader and three people passed us, so that was that was pretty much the difference there. But, uh, yeah, I mean, 10 laps, track position's huge, and uh, we just didn't have it there at the end. So uh, we had a, the best car out there for sure. Uh, even in traffic, I thought I was really good. I was able to get the top rolling there. I would have needed a 20-lap run <laughs> instead of 10, but uh, I don't know. I thought we had it uh, most of the race, but that's you know that's how racing goes, and um, you know, sometimes it works out for you, and sometimes it doesn't. But uh, happy to know we had a, a really fast car today, and um, go on to 600, long race, and, and try and win that one. So close, Kyle Larson, second place. Mike. Well, he'll return here next week as the Monster Energy Series point standing leader when we come back for the Coca-Cola 600 next Sunday night. Mike is so disappointing. You can see it in his face. He just saw a million dollars out the windshield drive away. For the first time in NASCAR's premier series, Kyle Busch rolls into victory lane. 12 years of trying to win this all-star race. And now he's done it. Jamie Little. Getting a drink, a well-deserved drink for Kyle Busch. Not a lot of things this guy has not done in his career, but this was one of them. Mark that box tonight. And you could tell this one means a lot, Kyle. I just said there's a lot of things you haven't done. This was one of them, winning in a cup car at Charlotte. It's your first win of the year in the 2018 Camry. Why is this one so special? Why are you so pumped up? Oh man, this is yeah, it's the all-star race for one and for two. We've never won at Charlotte in a cup car, so uh, we finally achieved that goal tonight and won the all-star race and won a million bucks. So there's reason to celebrate and to celebrate big. And I can't say enough about this team. Everybody on this M&M's Camry, this M&M's Car Caramel Camry this week. Uh, first race, first win for those guys. And being a whole new product and being on the shelves here in May, it's, uh, it's a whole new launch and a whole new program and it's here to stay. So everybody pick up your caramel. Can't say enough about Adam Stevens. You have Adam Stevens and these guys in the pit box, and you can rely on them all day long. And I had to do that tonight. You know, we weren't quite the fastest car, but um, we made the right changes when it mattered most. We made the right moves when it mattered most, and we got the most out of uh, out of our night tonight and got here to victory lane. So, just so uh, relieved, eluded, proud, and uh, excited all in the same time. Kyle, you and your wife, Samantha, were in Washington, D.C. You guys are big advocates for people struggling with infertility. You won a million bucks tonight. How far does that go in your charity and what you guys do to give back to those struggling? Well, it, it certainly goes a long ways. You know, the things that we do and the charitable things that we do are certainly a part of the Kyle Busch Foundation. My wife, she's a huge, a, a huge advocate. We both are for IVF and for our son. This is our son's birthday week this week. He was uh, he turned two on May 18th. So obviously uh, this one's for them and, and just uh, an awesome day for us, awesome weekend. We celebrate his birthday tomorrow because it's the day off. So it's going to be a heck of a party for a two-year-old. Not sure he'll remember it, but we all will. So it's going to be a lot of fun and um, all in all, just uh, super excited, super pumped for all these M&Ms guys, everybody from Mars, Skittles, Pedigree, Snickers, NOS Energy Drink, Toyota Camry. This thing was fast enough tonight. So, excuse me. Wait a minute. No, here we go. Always giving you million dollar checks. Always giving you million dollar checks. That's right. I'll take this one. Hell yeah, finally. You got it. Thanks, brother. Good job. Woo! Yeah! Now that's a million dollars. After 12 years of trying, Kyle Busch wins NASCAR's All-Star Race, and it's the first cup victory for Joe Gibbs Racing this season.
Live on FS1, and there is the victor with Michael Waltrip, Chris Myers, our post-race show, the Monster Energy All-Star event, the 33rd running, and for the fourth straight year, a first-time 